Lucas Free. We are 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 Lucas Free. Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Professor Spira, and we are back with part two of episode six of the Mucus Free Life podcast. And uh, I want to apologize for those of you that were tuned in yesterday and were getting all sucked in and was excited about us getting to uh, talking about some real, real liberation. And uh, we broke the Internet. Yeah, so that's our fault. We this information we have is just so powerful. We just broke the internet. So I like to apologize to the internet, YouTube. Uh, they they can't. We should understand they're not going to be able to handle everything that we we have to say and to share. But we're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying. And if it happens again, we will try again. <laughs> and so they're not gonna just because they can't handle it. They're not going to stop us. And uh, so, uh, yes, I hope all of you are doing well on this Saturday uh, afternoon. And uh, again, we have a very special guest that uh, I'm excited to get into some some heavy, heavy conversation today. Uh, So this uh, uh, this is Michael Adam Fathauer. How are you doing, my friend? Let's see. Oh, you got you're muted. You got to unmute yourself. I said I was doing pretty good. Now I'm better. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I got a weird hat on. It's uh, just some kind of weird stretchy bandana thing. Yeah. Hey, man. that's. I've never had long hair. So when I drive, it's like almost like waterboarding. When my hair's hitting my face, I can't uh, think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just throw this thing on throw sometimes. On. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Expression. Freedom of expression and uh, an utilitarian expression. Sometimes it's it's uh, yeah, use, useful. <laughs> so uh, so let's pick up where we left off from yesterday. I believe you had just got done talking about some of your recent transitional uh, challenges. You gave a little overview of your backstory and how you got into the mucus's diet and interested in health in the first place and then you got into some recent troubles and challenges you said you were kind of going through part of the part of the transition that we all all go through and i try to get people ready for the relapse periods you know people yeah. always want to think that <laughs> they're happened to me yeah 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 he you might have even have said that i don't even i don't remember it seemed like last year at the era day you said something about well, i'm not going back to this i'm like all right all right cool you know and so so, so that's the thing, man. This lifestyle, it's just a humbling lifestyle, but you have to really deal with it and really f- actually practice it and see if it is what it claims to be. When you go down these other paths and get into some of these more extremist paths, uh, it's not this path. You know? and so if that doesn't work for you in the long term, you can't blame don't blame all of the plant-based healing modalities and things uh, just because this one thing didn't uh, didn't really pan out if there was no transition. I mean, transition, that's just to me, that that's the, it just makes so much sense. That's the foundation. That should be the foundation of anything that we're doing. Uh, Not even outside of this diet. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Anything, anything we do, we're, we're growing up and all of a sudden you're an adult, not overnight. Right. You know? Yeah, right. You're remodeling a house. It's not done the next day. Things, exactly. Know, so. Yeah, that is, uh, is very, very true. Let's see here. Let me let me check uh, something out. So go ahead. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of your 
uh, you know, how, however you wanted to get started talking about this okay. idea of freedom. We'll, we'll use that word for, for now. When, uh, when we de- how, how do you define freedom? Uh, freedom. Is it okay if I um, tack on like five minutes from where we got cut off yesterday? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay, I was talking about um, going to a, a Independence Day or Fourth of July picnic yesterday, or no, not yesterday now, but on, on the Fourth of July, and I, I brought a watermelon and I brought romaine hearts and onions and some tomatoes and I I brought everything that I needed to make this giant salad because that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, would I have gone to a, a cookout without being married and having my wife, you know? insisting that I go no I wouldn't have gone but um, you know we're warriors to some extent and right. we can't get get away from uh, some of the things around us so I went great people no pressure about anything no mm. weird questions they did their thing I did mine we had good conversation mm-hmm. but I was mentioning yesterday how I had some pickles and that was my thing yesterday it's like oh everybody else is got this, all this stuff going on. What, what should I, how can I cheat today? Mm, <laughs> right. So I, I had some pickles and the vinegar was making me to where I was craving meat. And my wife makes these egg rolls that, that she's been making. I've been with her 15 years and <clears throat> memory and smell is a big deal. You know, we can smell something and go right back to like being five years old with right. mom or whatever it is. Yes. So mm-hmm. I smelled those plenty and, um, it wasn't a big deal. And then later on after the the um, the vinegar from the pickles, they they became a little bit. They smelled a little better. I you know, no way was I gonna give in or anything, but so I I was just experiencing that. I thought it was interesting. And and the other thing that I I know we got cut off yesterday, but I was talking about the importance of enemas because later on when I did an enema, the craving was gone, and when I talked about my relapse with pizza in October and eating cheese and stuff and not doing enemas during a, um, a vegetable juice fast. The enemas are like the, the guide in the dark. You know, they, they lead the way. If you're not sure where you're headed, the enemas will, will tell you where to go. They'll point in the right direction. Right. And without the enemas, it's, it's like being stuck in the dark. You might have your hand up for someone to help you or and, something to help you. And, um, without putting that work in to nudge your physiology or kind of help your body along and help get rid of the waste that's in there. It, it's, it's actually really hard to do this system and to actually gain traction because part of the system is the enemas. You take that away and you're not experiencing the entire system as um, efficient and correct as it, as it can um, function. Right. You know, you won't get the same results and things like that. So, um, there's even, even been times where I would be in an argument with my wife and I don't even know why I'm arguing. And I'll, um, there was one, one time when that happened, when I went and did an enema and I came back and I was like, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I was, right. you know, I'm yeah. sorry I was doing that. <laughs> I feel so much better now. And yeah, I even yeah, wrote yeah. it down in my little journal. I was like, Enemas stop arguments with wife, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. something to that effect. And uh, there was even one time that I was working on the house that's in the background here that it's, you know, it's not finished. If I put the camera up a little bit, you can see on the first floor, yeah. um, there's no drywall yet. So it transition. Right. But I was working on the house and there was nobody around, nobody picking on me, nobody calling me names, nothing. I was just getting so frustrated with the task at hand. And I, I, I took the circular saw by the extension cord and I swung it around almost like a weapon and I just smashed it through my floor and it mm. actually went down to the first floor. Yeah. And right after that happened, I was like real sad. I'm like, what the heck just happened? <clears throat> and within two days of that happening, I had some of the most and uh, some of the most mucoid plaque that has passed yet. And uh, it was also followed by some black tar kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it had a, it almost smelled like petroleum. If you're adding oil to your engine, there's like this oil, obviously a, an oil smell, it's oil. But um, I think that some of that smell could be due to, um, they're called petroleum distillates. Mm. And there's many, many 
byproducts after they make gasoline. The ex one example is diesel fuel is a byproduct of gasoline, so they use that to fuel different types of engines. But then there's also other um, byproducts like uh, dish dish soap and different detergents are made from oils. Um, right. But I think the waxes and some of the things they spray on the foods are also distillates and byproducts from the oil industry. So I think that's why. But after I had that stuff come through, I was really happy and feeling good again. So right. So this is uh, this is some of the images of mucoid plaque. <laughs> yeah, you know I like to do do that. And there's some new stuff. That's that's always that's always nice when there's some. This is this is new. I haven't seen I haven't seen these before. And uh, bio cleanse. So, but they, of course they're probably all associated with. With cleanses, people selling yeah, different the, the, uh, things. Yeah, the mycelium husk or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. I just, I still get a kick out of people out there that say that this doesn't exist. They're like, oh, there's no such thing as mucoid plaque. Well, I mean, you can name it. You can call it something else. You can call it slimy rope, ropies or something. You can just make a name up. That, uh, <laughs> that the picture with the penny, is, mm. there, is there a penny in one of the images? Uh, let me, where is next that? to the guy with his mouth open to the left of that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I had something similar to that come out uh -huh. a little bit more than that and a little bit lighter in color. Yeah. And I, ha I have a friend that um, tried the mucusless diet but wasn't doing it correctly. And, and uh, he's eating meat again. He was never really doing enemas. Mm. And uh, he he said every once in a while that if he if he eats... I don't know if it was pizza or rice or whatever that he has mucus that comes out. And uh, I was like, wow, you're lucky. You know, if, if mm -hmm. it's, if it's happening that fast and coming out or whatever, then that's good for you. But when I, I, I was on the phone with him and I was like, you know how you said that mucus comes out? You should see what, what came out today. And uh, I sent him a picture and I actually used like a, a long nail, like a three inch nail to like they hit right there. They have like a stick. Yeah. 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 And I had like a three inch nail, and I, I kind of like scooped it out. And it was on the edge of the nail hanging down a few inches. And I sent him a picture of that while we were on the phone. And he just started throwing up. And I was like, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, man, I didn't. What is that? <laughs> he's actually throwing up. I yeah, 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 yeah. But when I sent it to him, I thought that he, that's what he was talking about. He's like, man, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I think. Oh, yeah. I had a. You know, if we can get plaque on our teeth, why couldn't we get it on the the rest of the body? You know? Right, right. Because people will brush their teeth and talk about plaque all the time on their teeth, but and yeah. it's even on, it's even on their tongue. They'll scrape it off their tongue, but right. why? Why does it stop there? It doesn't stop there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. This is uh. That looks like some of the Keegan images from that video. Uh huh. It is. Yeah. This is from yeah. that from that video. Wow. This is impressive. There's some new. It's been a while, I guess, since I've done one of these searches, but there's definitely a lot more of these than there used to be because it really used to be there was a few that I put up. Like this was this is a scan of mine. Uh, so there is a lot of people would take scans that I made of a book <laughs> of the Bernard scan Jensen book. Yeah, a scan of a scan. And then I had a couple of my own eliminations that uh, that I put out there that used to make it make its way around the the internet but uh i wish i would have documented more earlier on you know i was just you know you just getting into the diet you, and this was before a lot of the stuff that's happening these days with the way that people think and another thing i say about when we eliminate the black tar stuff see we're not doing Char, you know, charcoal or the mud drinking, you know, this Ben and I clay kind of stuff. And generally speaking, that's not something that we will do or advocate um, in the beginning. And so we might be just having, we might be eating fruit that's not dark at all. So some people say, well, you're drinking grape, you know, grapefruit mixed with the Ben and I clay. Well, we don't practice that. That's not part of our. Uh, I know that there's a couple protocols that do that, and then they get the black stuff out, and then the people say, well, hey, you, of course it's going to be black. Yeah, but we, 
we might be drinking apple juice or something for several days or lemon water and get black stuff out. And so uh, in the earlier days, you know, I, I always make that claim because it does change. It does get into a uh, you know, different level. Yeah, I, I don't I haven't joined that club yet. That big long thing. I haven't. I'm not there yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's uh, but that's really interesting that you were able to uh, make that connection that <laughs> all of a sudden you you don't know why you're so agitated and you're kind of you know you snapping on people as we might say and you do an enema and this death stench and material come out and it's like it's like an exorcism you have eliminated uh, and purged this whatever you know, this thing that is making you insane you know that's causing so much uh, malevolence and uh you know you'd be sitting there that that i should get that uh put that on my soundboard where it'd be like this house is clear yeah, this <laughs> house. Do you remember? Um, do you remember the uh, the Ninja Turtle uh, cartoon back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Um, I think the character was called Brain or whatever. It was this. Yep. It was yeah, this Krang. That was Krang. Creature. What was it? Krang. Krang. Yeah, yeah. The brains in the stomach. Yeah, they, yeah. It was like. Yeah. Yeah. And I just picture that being like mucoid plaque, like controlling us. I just got that little image where it's yeah, just sitting yeah, there yeah. telling us how to feel, you know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what was that? Oh, um, I forgot what I was going to mention earlier. I wanted to mention how in the past you've said that you can, you can point out the biggest, toughest, bad dude in the room and then show him this diet and he can't do it. Most of the time, he's not going to be doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I've had people terrified of me. You know, little, little old me. Um, you know, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not here to. to you know, want to hurt anybody. Uh, but I've had people run away from me that are supposed to be, you know, big bad guys. That, you know, the, you know that that whole thing and gang members or whatever. You know, and I start talking about the diet, and they just get scared. They don't want none of it. And uh, and so it's it's interesting uh, that one story, the funniest one to me that I, that I always remember was somebody was in the neighborhood trying to sell uh, or no, they weren't trying to sell. They're trying to give away free meat. They had this high end expensive meat in the back of this truck and they were going door to door kind of I guess they just needed to get rid of it. And so they thought they would be nice people and. And he's like, man, we got these these steaks in here, whatever, whatever. You know, they were like super, like those expensive ones. They're like thirty dollars a steak or something. And I'm like, I'm I'm like, oh man, well I don't I don't eat. You know, no thank you. I was just real polite. I didn't even say I don't eat nothing. I just said, oh no thank you, I'm good. And he's like, well no man, I'm serious. There's nothing wrong with them. It's fresh meat. You know, it's these steaks. And I'm like, well I I don't eat meat. And, like, and then he just he started getting real confused and he was just looking at me Making he was like living off of it yeah yeah getting, and he's just like well, well how do you get your protein and, and then i was like uh oh here we go and so i was like well i don't believe in the protein theory and then he's just like what you know it's like he just you know the fact that it's a, a theory uh he's just like yeah but what about you know he asked some other question and so i then i started getting into I was like, well, you know, I don't believe in, with Francois Magendi and Mulder, you know, I don't agree. And I started talking about like, you know, well, back in the 1800s, there was these experiments with dead dogs. This dude just out of nowhere, he took literally took the ha his hand and slapped his forehead with the punch. His, his eyes went bug eyed like in the middle and he slapped his head and he turned red and he just looked at me in fear and he's like, He's like, oh, okay, okay, thank you. And he literally turned and ran away. <laughs> so, and uh, it's is 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 heavy, man. I mean, it, that's when I start. Well, I knew it before them, but in the early days when I started sharing this information, I saw how how powerful it was. You know, because it's uh, you know, when you're walking around with certain levels of truth and you are doing it. You know, you're practicing it. Um, it it can be scary to those that want to stay in the sandbox because this is basically 
a a coming of age type of thing in terms of one's lifestyle you know coming of age maturing and i'm not talking about age because there's a lot of people at 12 and 13 years old that's way more mature than folks in their 50s and 60s so i'm not talking about literal age but i'm talking about i guess spiritual age if, if for lack of a better concept um where people say oh so and so's got an old soul or they're you know a lot of wisdom but it's a way to mature in terms of of, of your life it's like really growing up because now we all because as you go down this path, things that you used to enjoy aren't going to be fun anymore. Now there's new things. There's a whole bunch of new things that are way more fun, that are way more healthy for you. But a lot of people, uh, if you're attached, see one thing I like to one of the you know one of the things I really enjoy about some of the philosophical or theological traditions is the concept of non-attachment. Non-attachment to people, non-attachment to things, non-attachment to activities, non-attachment. And and because what what's it take? That attachment kind of represents this stickiness, this mucusy, sticky kind of situation anyway. And you're and the more that you're attached to things is going to create obstruction when you need to move on. And so there's nothing wrong with enjoying things and 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 doing you know loving things or loving people and all you know I, there's nothing wrong with that i have a problem with the attachment because i see how it holds you back and can hold you back when when you need to take it to the next level when you need to take it to the next step and you're attached to something and if that's the reason why you're not taking it to the next step you're gonna have some problems there's gonna be some karmic repercussions because you know the, the 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 natural system doesn't care about you know the all the mental stuff that you're going through and to, it, it just wants you to be in line with it you know in line with nature and uh, so it's, it's it's powerful but that's why also if you look at stuff we did way years and years ago when i wasn't necessarily trying to transition people into the information you know i've changed over the years to where i was more kind of a shock and all kind of approach where i wasn't really trying to transition people into this information i just i wanted people to be exposed to it and then put it on them if they're gonna get into it or not and say well here i woke you up here's some water on your face wake up here here's this information bye I mean, that was kind of my attitude back then. It was just like, here you go. It's up to you at this point. Now. Almost, almost like a door hanger. You knock on the door, someone comes out. What's this? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I was kind of like that. Yeah, I'm already gone, you know, because I, <laughs> you know, I didn't want the drama, you know, because I already knew what it was. It was causing a lot of drama. And so I'm just like, yep, knock, knock, knock. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> on the door and I'm, I'm already gone by the time they, they open the door. <laughs> Uh, but I started to invest time and energy into, uh, well, you know, I, I, I did two years where I was teaching uh, as, a pro, as a professor of music, and that really gave me a lot of perspective and education in the process of teaching, building a curriculum, understanding the pedagogical approaches, and things like that and I started to notice that the best there's a connection between pedagogy and advertising and sales I mean you know and that that I won't get way off into that but essentially when you're sharing something you know you're, you're selling <laughs> this idea or this practice or whatever it is and you got to do it in in a way that people are going to grab onto it in, a, in fact because I never set things up just just to have people like okay well buy the books and that's it it's like now I want I would rather people get into a process to where they can actually understand this information and practice the diet and uh and and therefore educational tools are needed so that's what I've you know tried to do over the over yeah the years. You, you've done such a good job with that um, no, not everybody can pick up the old original 
Mucosus Diet Healing System book and hear the message through the old style of uh, writing. Mm. And uh, not only that, people didn't have as many distractions back then. Even if they were full of mucus, they didn't have all all the uh, electronics and that type of stimulant. Right. They, they had time to themselves to think and he's clearly unobstructed or you know has a lot of obstruction uh, that has been removed the way he, he speaks and the way he visualizes things um, one of the things that um, I relate to in the musician kind of sense is that if you have cymbals or guitar strings mm. for example those will get uh, tarnish on it they'll get oils on it They'll get oxidation, all kinds of things, and so that brand new symbol doesn't sound the same when it has obstruction on that. Right, so right. It doesn't have that bright. It might not have a bright crash. It might have like a uh, a muffled kind of um, sound to it instead of the bright crash. Guitar strings don't sound the same when they're rusted and corroded. So, mm -hmm. if you all can picture that, picture your body with the obstruction out, and when your body doesn't have things attached to it, slowing down the vibration of the tissues and things. We don't have the same the same message with uh, Yahweh or God, or um, we're not receiving the same information. I know that uh, Brother Air said that when you get what what did he say when you uh, what did he say when you empty your empty your vessel, you've got more room for. Um, well, you yeah, you in order to receive all that the universe is trying to provide for you, you got to be empty. You right. know, and so yeah, to be be empty, then you can be filled with the wisdom and the knowledge and the essence of the universe or nature or whatever term you want to use. Yeah, and there's there's um uh certain temples and things that people had to fast for 40 days roughly or 40 days 40 nights so that for one I guess it showed their um, their uh, their willpower over the flesh right the second thing is that they actually would be able to better receive whatever information was going to be shared with them in those temples or whatever right. um, <clears throat> that's well, kind of how I, I see it yeah yeah when uh, we, yeah yeah, Arnold Aaron had pointed that out in one of the articles. You know, he was talking about Pythagoras. You know, Pythagoras had to do the forty-day fast, monitor fast before he would be admitted into the Egyptian mystery system, the Egyptian mystery school. And he got into that school, and he comes out, and he puts out all the books and the information. And of course, in Western society, he gets the credit. For all of this, you know, uh, the 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 ones that were the ones that were let in the door, they were either were let in the door or stole the stuff outright. Uh, they they got the credit within the context of the historical record of Western uh, history, and uh, which is a that's I can talk about that all day. That's that's a whole other kind of topic, but but, but maybe it's not that kind of that, that could be the segue into talking about what we wanted to talk about today as well which is this idea of freedom uh, sovereignty uh what 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 does it mean to be free and to explore the concept of freedom not just you know we talk about physiological liberation on this channel in terms of understanding as we get our bodies in line the more that we can get in line the more that we pay reparations for that which we have done and our ancestors have done in the past uh physiologically speaking that we can move ourselves our families our nations and our world into balance again uh as long as we're unbalanced with nature where the chaos is going to ensue and it's just a matter do we want to do we want to get rid of the chaos because a lot of the people that are ensnared in the pus world 
They love the chaos. The chaos. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't want to get rid. They of don't want to get rid of it. They love turning on the news and seeing. Okay, who got raped today? Who got killed today? What? What's? What war is happening? What drone strike is going down today? You know what? Uh, you know they they love that. And so part of again the transition is as you start to transition physiologically that your values are going to change what you what entertains you what you want to do and what you want to see and what kind of world you want changes so we can't have this type of conversation with someone who still wants the chaos there's someone that is uh of by and for the chaos that you know you, this this is too high level of a conversation for them but for the rest of you that are fed up with the insanity that's going on out here uh, in the streets and outside and in, in, in the in the woods that are getting chopped down and in the slaughterhouses uh, in all, all over the place. If you're tired of that, then uh, then you, you have that spirit that uh, that demands freedom. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So, uh, so I guess where to start Just how do you. How do you define freedom? If I was just say, well, what or, or for sovereignty or whatever, whichever words, you, you know, you can kind of educate me on the best choice of words for um, what this thing is we're talking about. The first thing that comes to mind is freedom of association with others, freedom mm. to um, associate with others, whether it's through business, private affairs, whatever. Mm. Everybody has the, the freedom of association. Mm. And the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was um, created in 1948 by, let me see here, I forget, it's Elizabeth. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Yeah, that's that's a heavy one right there. Just yeah, free freedom of association, and. Uh, and, and I know you're you're gonna probably get into that and kind of look look at those those definitions. Okay, it wasn't Elizabeth; it was Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay. So, if you read or look up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it's pretty powerful because people have human rights before they have civil rights, and civil rights would be something that would come afterwards if someone was a part of that, and. The civil rights can't impede on the human rights. Mm, mm. Even if you're doing business with somebody, um, if, if you have a, a private agreement with somebody, nobody nobody can actually interfere with your your uh, freedom of association unless it creates an injury, unless you start tiptoeing on other people. So mm. you can't force association. Nobody can be forced to an association if they don't want to be a part of it. So we actually have in place today we have businesses that are actually posing as um, national governments and they are doing something called forced association but mm, their mm. their marketing and propaganda is so good that if people aren't looking into it and just looking at the surface they're gonna feel like they're a part of something but like if you're approached by a cop on the street or something there there there's like an uh, a natural fear. Mm -hmm. I've always, I've you know, I've always felt that, and, it, and it's because there's there's something that's not set up correctly, and uh, so I want to show you guys this this link real quick. Yeah. So I'll do a screen share, and I've got multiple screen shares. So everything that I'll talk about today, I have links, and I'm not just uh, fluffing you up here. And yeah, yeah. This is gonna be a, this is one of these episodes. You know, take out a pencil, paper, or get ready to do some typing. Take some notes. You're gonna want to take some notes on this stuff and really follow the logic, follow the definitions, understanding the words, the concepts, and uh, and 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 once this is posted later on, I'll put some of the links uh, down below uh, so that you can have easy access. But you can also kind of write them down here and find them yourself as well. Right. Um, also, they could pause the video and they can mm. see the actual, like the the images right. I have. Um, most of them have an actual screenshot of the URL above right. the image from where it was taken. So one of the first things is when people think that that they're a sovereign citizen 
or they hear that term all the time. That's mm. not a good term. You don't want to mm. have anything to do with that because sovereign is supposed to mean authority. Mm. Um, like the kings back in the day, they would call themselves sovereign. Uh, and then the citizen can mean subject. Mm hmm. Uh, to a sovereign. So a sovereign citizen is an oxymoron and it's just retarded because people are saying I'm I'm uh, I'm free but I'm a subject and it's just <laughs> the stupidest thing. Right. So <clears throat> it's also a way for the uh, the companies posing as government to create certain terms and they can attach that term to your your legal person and kill you publicly. And everybody around you will be cheering for it because they think that you're a threat to the society. But you're actually, if you're doing it right and you got labeled that, it's because you're doing something right. When you get the attention and you get smeared like that, if you're, if you're not doing it, um, you just have to be careful. You, you just you don't want to call yourself a sovereign by any means because mm -hmm. nobody nobody by themselves can be sovereign. You actually have to form a social compact with others mm. and that social compact is sovereign it's a it's a sovereign body politic and so we all have like I said I was talking about the day I got real frustrated and I took the circular saw and I smashed it into the ground what if somebody was around me and I took it out on them because I couldn't control myself right what am I going to say? Like, oh, you can't touch me. I'm a sovereign. Well, there's an injury here. <laughs> right. You know, I've, 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 I've trespassed. I've damaged and affected other people's lives. So if I'm in a social compact with a number of people and we, we all agree to the same thing, like not, not to uh, force association with anyone else, not to steal anybody else, not to commit adultery, whatever it is, not to take someone's wife or take their property. If you're in social compact with people, you know who they are because they've agreed to be bound by whatever settlement board. If you have a if you have a court system as part of, like if you had a if you have an actual national government that's founded on a, a social compact, you would also have a settlement board because you're going to need to. There's going to be people that are going to do things that uh, you know might not be the best thing, and to to be held accountable. And the reason why they could be held accountable is because they already agreed to the conduct on how they would conduct themselves within society. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's not hard to, to follow the, um, the Declaration of Human Rights. It's, it's actually pretty easy. You now, just, do, you, do you have that? As I brought that up, is that one that you have? I found the, the Article 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you are you going to show that or should I show it? No, I, I didn't have that one prepared. Okay. But um, if you want, you can just to, yeah, to kind of give folks this this introductory right kind of thing. Um, let me uh, let me bring it bring it up here. So transition. OK, uh, so this is the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You can look, get into the history of that yourself uh but the article 20 says uh, everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association number two no one may be compelled to belong to an association so right there a lot of people don't realize it but the courts the bar association the, the U.S. or the United States, which is two different entities I just mentioned because the words are different and so is the entity. Those are, um, those are private companies or you could call them private associations if, if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to force you into association with them. And the way they have things set up is, is they don't have full disclosure. They don't tell you that the, uh, the birth certificate is actually creating is actually traded on the stock market making you uh, a product mm. and you're not you're not living your life or reclassifying or claiming anything other so you're you're just walking around and you're actually a product mm -hmm. so when when you're uh, in the courts they they're they're like vetting um, they need to see if if you're um, if you're a quote unquote US citizen or, or part of part of them part of that association yeah, yeah. part of that association and believe me uh, it's 
people think that things are going down the tube, there's no way around it, and there absolutely is. You have to find out how to not be uh, in their association and also express it correctly and legally so that you're left alone. And it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You have to govern yourself. If you don't, if you don't possess the the uh, ability to govern within, you'll be governed without. Right. So, um, freedom. Another way to define freedom is um, full full liability for your actions, full responsibility. You know, if if you want full freedom, you have to be willing to accept all the liabilities that come with it. Right. It's not this. Uh, um, kill somebody, get 10 years kind of thing. You kill someone, guess what? You're done. You know? Right. So it's not a slap on the hand. It's not limited liability through the company. Right. And, uh, and, and for those, and it's interesting to get your perspective, cause I know, cause you don't, you don't deal with the, 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 the current constitution of the, uh, whatever you would call it. But what's, it's interesting that, for people that do identify with that document, the freedom of association is also in there, but I forget exactly where. Well, yeah, but it's that's a private company. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, but the okay. 1789 Constitution is actually just the constitution of a private, private company. Mm, and so mm. they're not talking to the people reading the Constitution. Like if I, call, mm. if I call AT&T and I say, hey, I got problems with my phone. Uh, I'm not getting... I'm not getting good reception. I'm not mm. getting all my phone calls or whatever. They're going to be okay. Well, what's your name? Like, oh, my name is my name is uh, Michael Anfather. Well, okay. Well, what's your phone number? Blah 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 blah. Uh, well, sir, we we um, we don't have you in our records. Sorry, we can't help you. So, if if you don't if you don't have a contract, and we don't have to focus just on contracts, but if if you're not a signatory there then you don't have any um, obligations to pay them and, and you don't you also don't have any rights to their services. Mm -hmm. So if you ended up calling uh, the right company, and let's say, you know, maybe maybe I said it wrong. You're, you're calling AT&T on accident, but you actually belong to Verizon. So you're like, oh, my bad, you know, and they're like, yeah, we don't, you know, we can't help you, sir, because you don't have any kind of um, contract or anything like that with us. So you, you call Verizon and, and they figure out that you're one of theirs, and boom, they actually have an obligation to restore service if you're having issues because you've paid them. So there's there's consideration. Um, for a contract, you have uh, offer, acceptance, um, performance, and consideration. Mm. Uh, or it's offer, acceptance, consideration, performance. Uh, the, the last two might be flipped around or whatever, but... Um, if both parties, one one party could provide the service, the other party could be providing um, the the uh, the money for the service. So both of them have that equal exchange, and and between them they set the terms of the the relationship with with um, the two parties. So the main question that I would like to ask everybody is: if that constitution belongs to you, are you a signatory to it? Mm -hmm. Did you sign it? Did you sign it? Yeah, right. Yeah, did you sign it or, <laughs> yeah, and the, and another and this will also to 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 open things up because then you can you can you know break all this break all this down, uh, kind of come at it from you know a lot of people are gonna come from including me you know we come from the our miseducation as the say the miseducation of the Negro <laughs> as uh as the great have you ever said. heard of um, deactivating your Willie Lynch chip? I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, people can people can look that up. That'll blow your mind. Uh, hold on. Okay. Why is this not okay? Uh, okay. This is strange. Okay. All right. Okay. This is what I wanted to read. So this is. Uh, cause I'm, I'm learning too. you know, this is, this, and this is how I study. Sometime I like, I like to try to, I'm going to do a video on how I take notes just cause I feel like I want people to know how to learn and just something as simple as knowing the right way to take notes, the right way to research, knowing the right keywords to look up at the right time can take things a whole different level in terms of your own education. But, uh, well, I looked up here, so there's a whole section on the, the, concept of freedom of association and the way that it's implemented internationally in different jurisdictions but 
uh, which says freedom of association is both an individual right and a collective right guaranteed by all modern and democratic legal systems, including the United States Bill of Rights, Article 11 of the U European Convention on Human Rights, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and international law, including Articles 20 and 23 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Article 22 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Declaration on F Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work by the International Labor uh, Organization also ensures these rights. So that's... So the, uh, the mucusfreelife.com, um, it could be structured, it's structured as an LLC or whatnot, but it, mm -hmm. it also is somewhat functioning as a private membership association, which is is a type of association between the people that are in it and as long as nothing nefarious is happening nobody can overstep those boundaries right because they're foreign to it right they're foreign to the members they're foreign to the policy amongst the members so um i want to just go over a list because the main yeah, thing yeah. the main thing is a chain of title people don't know the name of the country mm -hmm. they think that the country is called united states or the U.S. or mm -hmm. United States of America. Right. But the actual name of the country is the United States of America. Um, and I'll show you the links. It'll, it'll show you the actual name. But so basically, the chain of title is really important. So if someone calls me something other than what I go by, that's that's not the correct title. Mm. Um, but so it starts with the scriptures. And a lot of people think that the, the Bible is, is the law of the land, and uh, it actually was at some point. But from the scriptures, we had um, the law of nations that was written in 1758 by uh, Vitel. I think it's em Emmerich de Vitel. Mm. He wrote that in uh, 1758. And that actually sparked the people to go into... Um, that sparked the Revolutionary War. So the, the Bible is actually the law of the land, and when it's when it's read the right way, it's actually a nation-building book. Mm. It has all the necessary things in there for people to form a nation, mm. whether it's courts, surveys, establishing um, uh, the general post offices amongst the townships, how to set up the social compacts, all of that stuff. Mm. So Emmerich David Tell took that, from the scriptures and he wrote the law of nations in um, 1758 so now when you say bible what which bible you talking about there's there's a blue million bibles <laughs> so which is there a particular translation a particular one a particular tradition uh like so when, when you use that word what do you mean um just the scriptures just known as the scriptures okay uh yeah because there are there's there's a lot of different new versions of things, but yeah, if you just go back to the scriptures, then you would see that. Um, so after the Law of Nations was written and people realized what it took to form and create a country, they realized they didn't have one. Mm. So that sparked the Revolutionary War. And then shortly after, in 1774, we had the Articles of Association, um, which was here here in uh, the United States of America. So the Articles of Association is when people got together and started figuring out what they wanted to create together. Mm -hmm. And um, that was actually the first union. That was the first actual union by the people. It wasn't, it wasn't some kind of business or mm -hmm. privately held company posing as a government mm -hmm. that it would be government, government down. And, uh, you know, it'd be, it would be the government telling the people what to do, except the reality is that the people have their power when they assemble. Mm -hmm. So they don't have they don't have any one leader that dictates every, everything. What what they use for creation of all the laws and things is is when they get together and assemble a Congress, mm -hmm. and the Congress or that assembly can only make the laws when everybody has has um, is there and voting. Right. So they have it structured to where that it only goes that way. That way when something's written into law, everybody has a chance to rebut it. Everybody has a chance to be a part of it, modify it, whatever, because it, 
it would actually affect them. So who's going to create something that's negative if they know it, if they know it's actually going to also affect them? Right, the answer is right. they wouldn't do that. Right. So right now there's a lot of crazy things out there, a lot of crazy laws, and that's because there's a, a titled class, people that have titles of nobility that are hiding behind these associations and hiding behind the courts, and, and uh, they write these laws that don't affect them Right. If it did affect them, they would never write the laws. Right. So these laws don't have the people's um, the people's uh, acceptance. They don't have any kind of um, enactment clause. They don't even have oath and affirmations or acceptance. Uh, oh, what is it? A, uh, a letter of acceptance and acknowledgement for their office. They don't even have that. Right. It's because the offices aren't aren't actually real. They're they're just part of a business. So and uh, and one thing for the listeners, I would ask them just while we're talking, come up with, ask yourself how many private membership associations are you a member of, and how many associations are you being forced into, un, uh, illegally, by power by if if we, <laughs> you know power to the extent of you know be, being forced. I get I would say that. Uh, you know, when so- someone has a gun to your head or is ch- uh, threatening you with by taking away your liberty and putting you into a cage, there is, uh, uh, you know, there that is that's a problem. And that's the problem that we uh, uh, that we're in. A lot of us. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So after 1774. The Articles of Association created the first union, and then I just had it written down so I didn't mess it up. Mm. So, and then from there, we have the Declaration of Independence um, from 1776, mm-hmm. which, act, which actually has nothing to do with the, the uh, 1789 Constitution. Mm. They actually are called claim jumpers. The 1789 Constitution, which created the United States, it's the, the whole, the stylings different and everything. Um, when they had the the uh, Constitutional Grand Convention in 1789, they were supposed to amend the Articles of Confederation, and they had all this hype saying that it wasn't it wasn't a centralized government. It was weak. It, it wasn't perfected. It, it was vulnerable. All this stuff. But mm. those those were people like Freemasons or bankers trying to get in there and get rid of it, because. If all the people had their power in a Congress, you can't hijack a Congress because that's when people are assembled. But if you created something like companies have um, CFOs or chief financial officers, companies have presidents that that make a lot of a lot of decisions. You know mm-hmm. what they say kind of goes. So the the president of the United States, which is a company, um, has more that office has more control. So they they like that format. So they mm-hmm. actually had to over time convince people that their company was the original national government or the original uh, union, and it's Mm. not. So they never amended the Articles of Confederation in 1789. Instead, they created a whole new entity called the United States of America with a lowercase t Mm. instead of an uppercase t. So if any of you out there had a company and you wanted to create like um, even if if, like a lawn company and it was um, Jeff's Lawn Care and it was all capital letters for this just for the sake of the styling and somewhere on the application one of the um, one of the uppercase letters was a lowercase on accident your application will get rejected and sent back to you and they'll tell you that you can't apply for two entities on one form and people in the legal world they know this everything has to be to the letter or to the T and I think that the to the T part mm. is um, in circulation because things weren't to the T mm-hmm. back then, and um, so yeah, the uh, backing up again from from 1789. I was just kind of talking about it because it's there, but 1781 was the Articles of Confederation, and it created a perfect union to perpetuate the states. So the states can come under a social compact, and a social compact a big deal because the people that the people across the street from you, you need you need to know who they are, mm. you know, not personally, but you need to know at least that they're they're in agreement with a certain set of rules, so that everybody can coexist in, in some uh, 
some kind of structure without stepping on toes. So no while so while violation. we're on this, you know, so we so as we kind of hit these big concepts, I, I want to like you know kind of focus in on them. So give us your definition of a contract and the power of it. What what is it? What is a contract? Uh, the contracts have four bases, um, and it's offer acceptance, performance, and consideration. So that's the, that's the thing. Like, if 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 someone offers you a job, and you don't actually officially accept and acknowledge the job, mm-hmm. then there's no contract. Mm-hmm. So that that'd be one thing. Yeah, that's actually yeah. The, the main. That's it's pretty simple. You know, so you could say, hey, um, Mike, could you get me a glass of water? And uh, I could say, yeah, I accept and acknowledge, you know, <laughs> and get up and get you a glass of water. And we stand. Right, 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 right. You yeah. know. <clears throat> so. But, you know, but I'm, I'm hitting these things because I know later on they there are things that we have been taught to not take seriously. So you, you in, in maybe some more advanced schools perhaps public schools uh, uh maybe had this but we weren't taught about the power of association we weren't taught about the power of of contracts and the introduction to contract law uh to and and the, those that learn about it tend to be you talking about the title holders or the people that that you know the selected few that do learn about this stuff that then use that information to create their own little, uh, you know, their own little protection, their own little world. Uh, but this is this is big, like big stuff that, that that's just that, we, that we're all missing. That we're all missing the power, you know, the getting into it where it's it's just not about how many people can you assemble to march. And, and, and put your fist in the air, you know, and I'm a protester and I, you know, go do, you know, things that I believe in. I'm a show up. But there's uh, I know there's a number of people that think, well, that's that's what it's all about, that you just, you, you know, the power to assemble these people. We're going to march down there. And if we get arrested, we get arrested. You know, that kind of attitude that that's what they want. Honestly, they being the ones that have the power to throw you into a, a, a cell that's what they want because they can deal with that type of that kind of thing but but see what we're talking about now now you get into a point where you're, you're going to supersede all of that you just you go right around it and just say uh, i'm not i'm not going to deal with that i'm going to create my own associations and under first understand what that is understand what it means to to be, have that power because see people all day you can hear you'll hear about the my freedom of speech or you'll hear about you know or this uh, you know but they should be saying my freedom of association you'll never hear that but i but that the freedom of, so, of association is probably more potent than freedom of speech because within the context of an association, you can establish your own freedom of speech within a within the yeah, context. And if, if someone if someone in, in association with you, under social compact with you, is a signatory to to your association or in association with you, um, if someone takes one of one of the uh, people from the association, then that's forced association, and so the group would actually protect the individual. It's like, it's almost like a herd mentality where, you know, like one of the, one of the, the um, animals from the herd gets kind of picked off when they're mm. off to the side or whatever. So this, this creates a legal construct um, to protect people. You have someone that's got your back if, if you're being attacked. Right. Uh, also, if you read the um, Emmerich de Vittel Law of Nations um, from 1758, in that you will find that a nation must have a social compact and there must be signatories to it and they must accept and acknowledge um, the social compact. If you don't have that, it doesn't exist. So um, the U.S. or the, the United States, they don't have a social compact. Mm. That's one of the reasons why it's, it's not a nation. Mm. They have the Bill of Rights, but the Bill of Rights is not a social compact. It's kind of posing as one so they could slide it in there. Mm. And um, there's no signatories to it. Nobody's signed it. Nobody's accepted it. So they actually aren't protected by it. Mm-hmm. 
But when they ask for protections from the Bill of Rights, or they, they say, you know, when they're when they're referring to the, the constitutions aren't bad, it's just which constitution are we talking about? And, and um, so when people are demanding their constitutional rights, they're admitting that they're a member, mm -hmm. and that's part of that vetting process. So if, if you're demanding that right, well, um, you can't pick and choose what, what rights that you have. So they could say you have, you have the right to be thrown in jail because your ass is crazy. And, you know, that's, that's part of the, actually jail is one of the things, you know, they can, the U.S. citizens, if they act out of line, that, that's part of it. They, they get correct, their, their behavior gets corrected sometimes when they didn't need the, the correction or if it's severe penalty, that's, that's just part of it. Right, right. So. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, so, okay, we're keep, keep on, uh, keep on moving down the, okay. down the road here. So, um, another thing is. Um, okay, so like when you asked me the contract thing, um, mm. it's offer, acceptance, consideration, performance. So someone mm. offers you a job, right, to mm. paint the house. They offer you the job. You accept and acknowledge the duties of the job. So you're both in, you both have this acceptance. The agreement is beforehand, and then once you shake or sign, that's the acceptance. Mm. The performance from one side, the, wh whoever the party is that's bringing the services, that's, that's the performance. And then the consideration is the other party that's paying, and it can go, it can kind of flip flop and go both ways as well. So, bartering when mm -hmm. people barter, that's you you reach an agreement and then you accept and acknowledge, and then you like I might trade an apple for you, and you'd be like, oh, I got two lemons, and that's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that's worth it. So yeah. it's a reciprocal thing. There's there's equal consideration, and no one's shortchanged. Right. So, um, let me see here. Yeah, so the uh, the original country, the original name of the country is the United States of America, and that was created in 1781 with the Articles of um, Confederation, which is not the Confederacy or the, the Confederate thing from 1871. That was completely different. And um, I want to do a screen share real quick. Yeah. And the funny thing is the uh, the company posing as a government, they they've tried and tried and tried to change history, his story. And a lot right. of people will agree that the history is written by the victors, um, but they only they only kind of won for a little bit, you know. And they did it through force. So mm -hmm. the, the British really never left. They they created this uh, this dummy corporation to look like the original nation. Mm. And to slowly campaign and trick people into giving up their nationality to an actual national um, government or to an actual country, and get them to join this corporate, this corporate type of thing, to mm -hmm. where you have limited rights, you don't have a social compact, um, and <clears throat> and eventually you get turned into a product. Um, so let me do the first screen share here. I'm gonna mute out for a second. Okay. And uh, yeah, and while he's doing that you know this brings to mind you know, there's a, a real good friend of mine that's going through some things where in some states in the united states they're starting to force people to vaccinate their kids and they i guess earlier last month in june it just passed the uh, the state uh the state laws and so in order there's a, there's laws in place that they'll throw you in jail if you don't go through the proper jump through the proper hoops and have your child either go to private school, public school or homeschool them. They're going to put they're going to take your kid and throw you in jail. Uh, I'm assuming that's what the that and I don't have the actual law in front of me, but I know that that's the type of repercussions that go on. Now they're saying, "Well, okay, you you have to put your kids in to some kind of thing but they also have to have this poison pumped into their body and if they don't do it by a certain date they can't get into school if they can't get into school we're taking your kids and you're going to jail absolutely and then there's there's the whole i mean it's it's ridiculous there's people that liter legitimately cannot like let's say the uh, a family divorce like a mother and a father uh, they're married and they divorce for some reason and the, the father gets stuck with this mandatory child support that's unrealistic, creating mm -hmm. a legal impossibility. Mm -hmm. Then he gets put in jail. 
loses his ability to travel to, to a job, loses the ability to even have a job, loses his license, all that stuff. And mm -hmm. then they're still at the same time creating the illegal impossibility to pay mm -hmm. and demanding that he pays at the same time. It's like right. someone holding your head underwater and saying, breathe. Right. You can. You can. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's disgusting, you know, and that's why, you know, you see us oftentimes, I think people don't always understand why we're so outraged by the society because some people are in some kind of comfortable situation and they're not really understanding the reality of how, op how oppressive this thing that we're a part of is that we've been forced into. They, they don't get it. And when you are trying to and as soon as you start because it's one of those things is the old uh uh you know when they they came to take the communist and i said nothing because i was a socialist they came and took the catholics i said nothing because i'm jewish you know that uh that old poem you know that's that i you know, don't I, see if that i could uh, interject i have something that's perfect for yeah you. all right um so right there, like if, if uh, or you go to the Elks Lodge, right? The Elks Lodge mm. has um, members, membership for Elks members. And you can go to the Moose Lodge and hang out. And you can become a Moose member. You can be a member of both of them. But right. don't go to the Elks Lodge and be like, well, over at the Moose Lodge, we have this on tap and we smoke cigarettes if we want. Yeah, you, yeah. You go got... over to the, you, you know, you can't, you can't go to either one and force them to accept you know something that's outside of them because right. if you're if you're a non-member then what, what are you doing here right. you have no vote you have no say you're not in agreement you haven't signed anything you know yeah. in that example yeah. you haven't you haven't accepted and acknowledged membership right so and you you also pay for memberships in most of those places as well so you have you have um you have um uh rights to to enjoy the membership there and to go there and play pool mm -hmm. with your buddies or mm -hmm. shoot darts or whatever and uh and they have an obligation to provide because you're paying into it. You're a, you're a member in good standing. So I just wanted to mention that the United yeah. States Constitution from 1789 is actually a private charter for a private company. Mm. And uh, it's all copyrighted um, intellectual property that people can never use. They don't have permission to use it because they're not a part of it. Mm. So yeah, yeah. If, if a Roman soldier charged me with Roman law... It, it you know it bounces right off me if I can show the right documentation and I'm and you know I I've expressed my legal position or claim to nationality outside of Roman law because it would it wouldn't apply to me. Right. It doesn't mean that I go over to Rome and kill someone and say sorry I'm not one of yours I can kill people. It doesn't mean that right. because international law and the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, does not allow that stuff. It doesn't fly. Right right right. There's a lot of people pushing statutory law and. Um, they're, they're, they, they call them gurus and I got caught up in the guru stuff. And fortunately for me, I didn't ever file any of the processes with, uh, the UCC or uniform commercial code stuff. And mm. that's all private, private administ uh, you know, private law. And, mm. um, those are all private associations. And mm. when we use those, it, it, it might, some of the laws and some of the things, uh, they're actually just internal policies. They're not, they're not public law, but if someone sees or, or read some of those those policies or thought they were laws, it could it could make sense, but if it's out of context, then what are you doing? You know, it doesn't it doesn't apply. You have to you have to know what what that applies to. So right, right, right. You know, there's going to be certain rules at Elks Lodge. Here we go. You know, so right. let's you, see. Did it you, only applies to Elks Lodge members. Right. So you got your. I don't see your. Uh, I see your Skype thing, but not your yep. stuff yet. So right here, okay. U.S. Department of Justice, 950 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20530. Webs See, I can't. Uh-oh. It says the, uh, the connection is poor. We are having a moment here <laughs> where uh, we lost Michael. Uh, hopefully this will reconnect in a moment sorry about that bear with us as we do all this uh this complicated technical broadcasting here and uh you know trying to do a do a lot with a little over here that's been our motto 
with the uh, with mucus free life. Uh, so let's see. We might need to uh, we might need to reconnect. So let's uh, uh, so let's let's take a little break maybe, and I'll see. I was trying to f trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and call him back. Right, you back? <laughs> what happened? I th we you just you just dropped. Uh, you just the, the it said that the connection was was weak. So for we had a moment of bad connection through Skype here. Mm, so okay. um, yeah, so try to try to share that again, and also uh, uh, x out the little box at the top right once you do it. Okay. And we'll uh, yeah we'll get this set up here. Yeah, the little the little Skype jingle. They've had that same jingle since the beginning. I remember, I think. Yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, so yeah, you're uh, you are up. <coughs> if you uh, gotta unmute yourself. Okay, so we're going again? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so when I mentioned um, if a Roman soldier walks up to me and charges me with Roman law, um, if I'm not a Roman, or if I'm not under Roman law, I can't be charged with it. I don't mm -hmm. I don't have to prove myself. Uh, the burden of proof would be on them, I would think. But mm -hmm. that's just a, that was an example. I might have mis, mis, uh, represented it. So I want to do some other screen shares. And I'm not sure of the order on here, so let me... Let me go back. And to just give a little time frame, we'll probably we'll go for another 30 minutes, you know, because if we don't get through everything, that is totally fine because we will come and do more because I, I know we, we're packing a lot of stuff in here. We're going to be hitting folks with a lot of information so we can definitely have another episode and, you know, kind of pick up where we left off if we don't get through everything. Well, what's going on here? Okay. You're still there, right? Yeah. Okay. Facebook was um, not not responding for a second. This is actually my one of my first times um, explaining this stuff, so I'm actually teaching myself mm. and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, finding out where some of my weaknesses are because mm -hmm. this isn't my information. This is international law. This is uh, the scriptures, mm -hmm. law of nations, and um, this is this is my 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 best attempt to convey the message without putting opinions in there and, and mm -hmm. uh, tainting it because mm -hmm. with, with law or international law, it's, it, it is what it is. You know, it, opinions don't matter once, yeah. you know, the law is set up and, and that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So are you, uh, are you trying to send me some, or are you getting some, getting some documents? <clears throat> okay. So as long if you can see, So uh, we are waiting, ladies and gentlemen, while uh, Michael is getting, uh, accessing some information here. You can see the screen, correct? Uh, yes. But okay. I, uh, yeah, are, are you where you want to be? Yeah. Okay. All right. You're on. Yep. So right here, this is Cornell or www.law.cornell.edu. And uh, this is talking about what the United States means. So the term state here means any of the several states, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas, or any territory or possession of the United States. And you see the United States here, that's a different styling from 1781. 1781 mm. was the United States of America with a capital T. Yeah. It was all upper and lower case, and it was all spelled out, the United States of America. And when people say USA, that's actually a banking code. That's that's not even an entity. But the United States means a federal corporation, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of United States. 
This is uh, United mm. States code here. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right there. You know, because yeah. we say that, you know, the United States is a, is a corporation and people are just like, oh, that's just the, uh, you know, they have some <laughs> attitude about it. It's like, no, that's what it says. <laughs> yep. And, and, and here's the biggest thing is that um, this presentation, it, it is what it is, but it's, it's not to create fear mongering. I'll, I'll give you some links later on, but um, people can actually claim um, a resident declaration with the original government from 1781 because it was brought forward. Um, a, a number of people trying to find their freedom realized that the 1789 Constitution um, was actually the creation of a private company and they never fulfilled the reason for the grant, the uh, Constitutional Grand Convention. They never amended the original government. They created a new one and uh, slid it on in there. So when they realized that, they actually fulfilled the original purpose of the Constitutional Grand Convention they amended the Articles of uh, Confederation and brought it forward to the present day. And I, I think 2010 or 2013, mm -hmm. maybe it, it's right around there, mm -hmm. is when it was actually uh, brought forward. So if you all are catching on to some of this, you can actually change, um, change the way you're living your life. You can change the way your, your status is. Don't go for any of the guru stuff. Do not associate yourself with sovereign citizenship. It doesn't exist. It's just, mm. um, it's a smear. It's a, a smear it's term so that they have an yeah. excuse to murder you. Uh, for real. To, yeah. to protect their interests. They'll yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, so, see what the next image is here. <clears throat> All right. So, right here, this is an example so one of the, the original colonies back in the day, one of them was Pennsylvania, or the original states was Pennsylvania. So why do we have Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? It's a completely different entity. It's not the original state. Mm. It's not one of the original states of the Union. So here's the address, 238 Main Capitol Building, Harrisburg, PA, 17120. The uh, web address is www.pa.gov, and it says right here, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is a privately held company in Harrisburg, PA, and is a headquarters business. Categorized under executive offices, our records show it was established in 1787. Remember I told you the original government was 1781? Mm -hmm. The United States of America? Yeah. So they start, they start changing the chain of title and the timeline shortly after that, and you have them slipping this in right here. Mm. So it's incorporated in Pennsylvania, which is kind of funny. That's a different entity right there. That's uh, that's another story. So, current estimates show this company has an annual revenue of five hundred thousand to one million, and I think it's way more than that. And employs a staff of approximately eighty nine thousand two hundred and seven. Mm. <clears throat> so there are creature states or states that are posing as the original states of the union, and then with some of the information and links that we'll provide after this video, you can do your research and find out the correct chain of title and correct history with the original states of the union from 1781 forward. Yeah. Yeah. So right here, here's uh, I live over by, uh, by the city of Pittsburgh. I don't live in the city of Pittsburgh per se, cause there's, um, there's different surveys. There's two different surveys. There's um, original survey and then there's this overlay of municipalities or districts. Um, this is the city of Pittsburgh, 1808 Caldwell Street, Pittsburgh, PA. People, when they hear city of Pittsburgh, they picture the whole city, but it has an address. And it's, um, it's a privately held company. So if you're not doing anything nefarious and you're, you're not injuring anybody and, and you, have, uh, you have no ties to this company and you get approached by them, they're trying to get free gifts from you. They're trying to, trying to get money from you. They're, um, they're also... Um, they're walking around as a private company on, on a, a, most of, you know, all this proper, uh, I'm sorry, public property and, mm. and they're stopping people on public property and saying that they can't be there, can't be at this park or whatever. But right. the original state of Pennsylvania has never ceded public property to this private charter. Mm. They're just a private company. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the next one here. So this right here is, um, a map of the states. 
so that's uh, that's one survey. Mm-hmm. So everybody thinks that they're here in these states with with this this survey. Everything is mapping and surveys mm-hmm. because if if you if you claim a resident declaration with the original government and you become a resident with the United States of America, you're you're moving your legal person into a different survey, mm-hmm. and you're taking it out of um, a municipality, which is uh, another survey from these private companies. Mm-hmm. And and that map here, let me close this again. These are the original states of the union right here. Yeah. This is not, this is not where the majority of the people are because they're not really. Um, oh darn it! <clears throat> We're having uh, connection issues again. It uh, says we are reconnecting. Uh, sorry about the technical issues here, uh, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is some stuff. You know, this is getting into something that is uh, well. What I take from it, what I like it is, no matter where you are in the world you can do this kind of research you know so it's like okay we're talking about the united states the united states uh of america (laughs) but it's but this kind of study see i'm into the process of learning the process of study and using study using learning to you know people always use that term you know the you know reading is power studying you know learning Learning is power, but they don't teach you how to learn. They just try to sell you on something that they themselves aren't doing. They're not studying. This is study. And you can do you could do this for Canada, you could do this for UK, countries in Africa, Australia, wherever you're at. You could do this kind of study. Look find out how legitimate it are the people that are governing you. How legitimate is police stations and the government, the congresses, and, you know, you, you find that out yourself. And uh, we'll try to reconnect here. Skype is done now, so I don't do Skype. All right. I think we are. Yeah, I think, I think Skype's on to this, honestly, because this used to happen when we used Skype, uh, the government used to use Skype as a platform, and we were always getting hacked and huh. calls yeah. interrupted. That's why we use Zoom now. Uh huh. Right. So, uh, so yeah. So go ahead and try to do do your screen share again, and we'll see if we can pick up where we started to to lose the connection. Yeah, and, and let me know to the best of uh, what you remember what I was um, leaving off on. Yeah, you were on the uh, the survey of the states. Uh, of the the image of the states with the the colorful image. Okay, so right here is where I'm at. I'm I'm within the original meets and bounds of the original country, the United States of America. These are all the original states of the Union. I have a I started off with a resident declaration, and that moved my person into the states of the Union. And like if someone goes to another country, they, they do a um, they can declare residency, even though it's it's not technically another country. They still have the law of nations somewhat. You know, they still have things that look and feel like government so that people don't catch on to it. Mm. But if you go to a different like if I go to China or Canada or whatever, I, I do a resident declaration over there or I, I would um, ask for residency. And then I have depending on what their laws are or internal policy, you have X amount of years to learn their customs and traditions, learn their culture, and then you decide if you really want to be there. Mm-hmm. Because once you become, um, once you create, uh, like, once you become, like in their terms, it would be a citizen, but um, once you go for that full-blown um, acceptance to, to live there and, and be a part of that, it's not really um, easy to, to go to go back I mean I mean you can but um, let me see here so everybody thinks that they're here 
but they're actually here. This is a this mm. is an overlay survey done by the company, is that, and they set up they set up districts. Is that counties? Yeah, you can call them counties. Okay. They they go by uh, municipalities. Uh, yeah. So those those are all city states. Mm -hmm. They're not counties. They're not states. They're uh, they're all cities. So. Where are the? Uh, I hope it's is it happening again? Okay, all right. Like you said, they 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 might they might be on, <laughs> they might be on to us. Uh, Let's see. Let me see if he can, if he has all this stuff put together, he might be able to share it with me. Uh, that happened again. It seems like it's happening mostly for there. If and I don't know if you, if you are you plugged directly in, or are you using Wi-Fi? I'm using Wi-Fi, but I'm sitting right next to the modem. Okay, because sometimes with with this level of broadcasting, is is best to be directly connected in. I, with you, all of your documents, is it in a in such a way where you could you could easily send those to me, and I could and I, I could go through them on my end. I, I I think this won't this. I don't think this would happen if I was doing that. If I was broadcasting the the image. Yeah, I can send those to you through Facebook. Okay, they're all. all right. is it, yeah, it looked like they were kind of. <laughs> all right. Together. Hopefully, people aren't falling asleep. I, I'm trying. trying my yeah, best. yeah. Well, this is yeah. This is be something they they need to. They're going to be going back over this because this is a you know it's a lot of information and it's stuff that, um, that, like I said, is applicable to anybody anywhere. You know, we're just doing Absolutely. the United States, so called United States of. Uh, or United Snakes, <laughs> as, uh, as Will and his Brother Air was United in, United Stakes of Egg America, <laughs> and um, so we'll uh, yeah we'll get those, those. So how does the live feed or how does how's this uh, look when the, when this keeps happening? So the, uh, it just says that that connection is weak. And, and that it's attempting to reconnect, but it, it hasn't been able to reconnect. And uh, so, uh, so I think what we're what we'll do while while you're getting me those that information, I, I sent it to you. So I through okay. messenger. Okay. So uh, uh, real quick, we're gonna uh, uh, share something from our sponsors. Uh, this is uh, we we heard from Doc Docker yesterday. Uh, but he he has a little little something he's selling, and so we'll, uh, we'll we'll and he said he wanted to sponsor the show, and so we're gonna we'll share this. So uh, so here you go, and we will be right back. All right, for some reason, I'm just going to... Um
Bizarro World Headline News is brought to you by Doc Dockery's 23 and a half day master meat and raw pig's blood cleanse. It's a way to recharge, rejuvenate, and renew the body. Anybody can benefit from the master meat and raw pig's blood cleanse. It's a way to jumpstart your body for a more active, healthy, and natural life. There's no vacuum or mop needed for this little housekeeping ritual. It means eating as much protein-rich raw meat as you like and drinking at least two liters of fresh pig's blood per day. It's so easy and so tasty. But what about children? I hear some of you mothers saying, Mother, please! Children and even babies can follow this magical cleanse. The Wizard of Dr. Oz gave Doc Dockery's 23 and a half day master meat and raw pig's blood cleanse two and a half thumbs up. Friends, you'll flip over this cleanse. Doc Dockery's 23 and a half day master meat and raw pig's blood cleanse may increase suicidal thoughts or actions in some children, teenagers, or young adults within the first few days of treatment. Depression and other serious mental illnesses are the most important causes of suicidal thoughts or actions. Male patients drinking raw pig's blood have often experienced erectile dysfunction. If an erection lasts more than three hours, you're doing it wrong, and you are encouraged to talk to your doctor. Pig blood is not approved for the treatment of vegan babies. So what are you waiting for? Brother, get out of that Benz. Sister, put in your contact lens because friends, you'll flip over this cleanse. Psychopathic, suffering from a chronic mental disorder with abnormal or violent social behavior, often possessing an inability to feel empathy. <laughs> Therapy, treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder. In a world where psychopathic behavior has become normality, musician healers must provide the soundtrack. On December 5th, 2015, Join drummer and percussionist Brother Air, trombonist Professor Spira, saxophonist J.D. Allen, and bassist Eddie Brookshire for a therapy session unlike anything you've ever experienced. With special guest appearances by dancers Janon Al-Jahani and The Robot Man, plus visual art by Ken Obasi Leslie. Mucus Free Life, LLC, and The Vault, LLC, aka Video Audio Lecture Theater presents Brother Air's Psychopathic Therapy Sessions at The Vault in the Essex Studios, Suite 259, Floor 2, 2511, Essex Place, Cincinnati, Ohio. Admission is free. The revolution will not be televised, but felt with every fiber of your being. One man's vision offers hope to humankind. Order Professor Arnold Eretz's annotated, revised, and edited mucusless diet healing system today. All right, brothers and sisters, we are back. Thank you so much for bearing with us as we work through all of these technical issues i told you you know we broke the internet yesterday and that they was going to be trying to shut us down today but we will not give up this information needs to get out so all right i can now uh share these images they're all in a line uh so michael whenever you are ready you can uh, plug back into us here um can you see or hear me uh i can Okay, I'm ready. I'm plugged in. All right. So uh, let's see here. I can zoom zoom in. We're gonna we'll try this. We'll see uh, if 
people can see us and the content at the same time i have it set up like that so we'll we'll see so i guess i will you don't have these numbered so i can no they're not particularly in so order yeah but, so um, they're in alphabetical order uh so you is there a particular one you want me to go through you just want me to kind of start no you can them? just kind of like peruse them or or even uh share them later on i mean it's, so did you already go over this how the the police department's a p privately held company yeah yeah they're all just franchises right of the uh the original or the uh 1789 <clears throat> private company right yeah sheriff's office privately held company this is uh, i'm sure everybody's seen at least one video where um and this isn't about bashing police at all i, I got mm. pulled over the other day and i was the nicest you could ever imagine i was let go in like 30 seconds i didn't yeah. say anything special i right. treated them like a human being yeah i put all my windows down i had my lights on yeah i had my, my hands on the on the door yeah. i had my engine off he asked me um for, for my driver's license, I told him where it was. And I mm -hmm. told him if you need to see it, it's in the, the center console. If you want, I can get it. Um, mm -hmm. So just let me know when you want me to reach for it, and I will. You know? No, and, and yeah. I, you know, and I, I even pulled, I, I waited like, he got behind me because like I, I like swerved a little bit. But, you know, I'm at, it was like 1 30 in the morning. Like everybody swerves here and there. Like you can hit the line. It doesn't mean you're wasted or drunk. Right. So he was just checking on me. He wanted mm -hmm. to see if I was drinking and I wasn't. So he yeah. saw that and he, he left me alone immediately. And I yeah. told him that I parked in, um, I pulled into a, a lit parking lot for both of us yeah. so that, so that we had a, a nice lit area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. appreciate all that stuff. Um, so, and they don't, they don't know how everything is structured every time, you know, and, not all of them are assholes. It's unfortunate that things are set up that way, but right. Um, yeah, and that, that's not what this is all about. This is about peace. This is about um, following the law, for one, and holding others accountable that aren't following the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. It doesn't, doesn't mean it's an uprising and you got to go bash and burn stuff. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. Right, right. It's about being responsible. Right. Okay. All right. So the one, I don't know if you can see this on my, I got the code of canon law here. That's what, that's what is up. Can't hear you. You hit the uh, mute, I think. Yeah, I'm just reading with you. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. A canon, a met metropolitan, metropolitan. Yeah, so this is this is showing you how the archdiocese uh -huh. answer answer to the Roman Pontiff or the Pope. Okay. The Pope is is more of a, um, is not really a religious figure. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So he's actually con controlling, controlling. Um, if you're in if you're in a um, if you're in that second survey I showed you guys with all the little city states, you're mm. under the Pope's control. Which might sound crazy to people. Right, right. So. Right. Okay. This is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives. Privately held company in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is this own this business? You'd be like, well, yeah, I own it. <laughs> if, if I hit that button, that means I own the business. <laughs> right. And, uh American Bar. Okay, well, I know you got a lot to say about this American Bar. Oh, no, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have too oh. much to say. I mean, okay. they create laws that they that they don't, um, they don't even uh, apply to them right. because of how they structure it. You know, right, they're a right. private company, and when you're in that court, it's a private court. What are you doing there? Right, right, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Private, private I'm membership. I'm telling anybody what to do. I'm just asking a question. What are you doing there? That's yeah, all I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Private. Is, none of this is legal advice or anything. No, no. Do your yeah. own research. Um, these links are here for you to do that. Yeah, this is all yeah public information. We're just yes, saying like, because for me, just to to think of because I've been a part of you know the Eagle Scout, the Boy Scouts of America as a private membership association, but I didn't think about it like that. I mean, I didn't think that okay, I'm, I'm in a private membership association that has its own constitution and its own laws, you know, good things that govern internally that is outside of the, uh, the jurisdiction of 
you know, out, other entities. You know, I just wasn't thinking like right. that. This is a new way to think about things that uh, I know a lot of people don't think about uh, things that deeply in terms of association, that, that what that actually means. And yeah, and the, the American Bar Association, when they make all these laws, they're actually subject to it, but nobody is holding their foot to the fire because they're creating it. Because they're creating it, yeah. So there's creating right, it. Abo- yeah. like liter- literally above the law. Create, they, they creates create the law so they can be above it. To the attorneys and lawyers, they are, they are a privileged class. Right, right. Well, you know, self-appointed privileged so, class. Right. Because governments are not private. Just so you guys all know that. Governments are not private. They're public. Yeah. All governments are public. You have assemblies. You you show up to committees. You show up to assemblies. You know, you voice your opinion. Try show. You know, there's plenty of like C-SPAN videos or different videos with the the U.S. company side where people stand up and like, this is all this. This is fraud. They get thrown right out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they get thrown thrown right out. Yeah. they They don't have a say there. They're in the wrong assembly. Yeah, yeah. Not a party to it. Right. Yep. They didn't sign. <laughs> they yeah. They're not signatories to. They don't have nothing to do with that. This is an example of just uh, Broward County in Florida, which and if you guys, I don't know if you saw it. I just shared uh, like a week ago, the uh, Broward County mm. their sheriff's office just lost all of their. Um, their funding and accreditation because of how they've been handling um, mm. shootings and things with, mm-hmm. with people. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say um, all cops are murderers, but there's a lot of murder going on disguised as justice. Mm. On their end, so. That's a, that's a good way to put it. That's a, that's a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a very legalese, uh, you know, cr- way to put that. Yeah, there's a lot of murder going on, disguised as justice. That's that's good, man. That yeah, we make that's a, that's a quote for you. We're gonna put that put that on a meme. <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, let's see. This is the legal action involving the county. This is more of the Br- Broward County, I think. <clears throat> Any legal action by or against the county, the county as a corporate body shall be the party named and shall appear and participate in the cause on behalf of the department officer or employee in such cause. Yeah, exacting contracts. No provision of this charter shall be construed to interfere with any valid contract entered into by the county government. This is uh, Article 1, Creation of County and Powers of Government, Corporate Name and Boundaries. And uh, now, so what is the, uh, what do you want to point out on this one? Yeah, nothing really. It's just, oh, just okay. more proof. Okay. Just yeah, just more of the. Mm-hmm. And when corporations pose as government, uh, that's fascism. Yeah, well, that's that's an yeah, that's an important point. Yeah. And here you go again, uh, Browning County Sheriff's Office, privately yeah. held company. Yeah, yeah. So the people that they're, the people's lives they're affecting and families they're tearing apart, um, it's a company doing this. Yeah, a private company. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just have a they have a costume that looks good. Right. Right. And, and just so you all know, it, um, back in the day, I actually used to, when I was a U.S. citizen, before I did my um, oath and affirmation to become an American national, I actually worked for the, the creature state of Florida in the prison system. I was a corrections officer for almost two years. Mm. So um, I have a little bit of experience uh, with the law enforcement stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm not just like bashing them because they were, I was working with real people. I had yeah, real yeah, relationships. Yeah. You know, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was a corrections officer. I thought these people, um, some of them, some of them were you know, murderers, or you know, maybe they messed around with kids or whatever. Some of them mm. should have been in there, mm. but a lot of them shouldn't have. And a lot of them were in there for um, some of these numerous um, statutes or internal policies that are almost impossible. When you leave your house, it's almost impossible, or it is actually is impossible to not break one of their statutes. And right here is a little snippet. Mm. 
Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union between the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Bay, Rhode Island, the Providence Plantations, or in Providence Plantations, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Article 1. The title of this confederacy shall be, in quotes, the United, the United States, States of America with a capital yeah. T. So they, what they do is they, they make this look like it's toilet paper and that it fell apart. They mm. made it fall apart. Mm. Right. Because then this, this, you're right. What you're looking at is the original country, the people's voice. Mm. That, that's something that if you were a part of, you could like, um, I, I interact with, with, um, um, with the, the, the original states of the union. I've been a part of assemblies. I've, I've helped to create laws and mm. they were all, it's all human right compliant. It doesn't harm anybody. It actually it protects people. We're setting up things. It's, you know, I don't have the wig with the curly hair and all that stuff, but I'm a part of history and it feels really good. Yeah. So okay, I wanted to, all right, just make sure everything was, was in order there that we're still broadcasting. So then, yeah, and I, I probably have about 10 more minutes. Okay. All right. If, yeah, uh, so we'll... that, Cause I know you said you wanted to go about 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. We can kind of, so. kind of, kind of wrap it up as we uh transition yeah i mean the end this here, is probably making some people's head explode honestly yeah yeah and there and we yeah we'll take a look at the comment section in a minute there, there's some there's some discussion i'm i'm singing yeah because uh, because the thing you know there's we have to understand you know we're all coming because as somebody that's interested in education what when, when i look at all this kind of stuff i'm immediately thinking how can we explain and break these things down and show evidence and uh in in such a way that it can reach a, a, a large demographic of people you know a lot because while understanding there's people that are coming from different backgrounds and that have prejudices and things that they already you know the, all of those things come into play and uh and so I try to create an environment where we can say, okay, well, let's let's just look at this information first and foremost. I understand people are coming from all kinds of different belief systems, political ideologies, uh, socioeconomic situations, uh, private membership association, you know, their own associations, uh, all of these different things, uh, and you know it's 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 like it just i'm saying it's just because it's like a barrier it it yeah. those all of these hang-ups can prevent us from really get religion thank you religion you know all of these things are like barriers and obstructions that get in the way of us getting to the information that can actually yeah. free us well religion is uh, is actually different than faith you know um I, I believe in Yahweh. I believe in God. It's not a religion. It's it's a faith. Um, you know, I I'm a I'm a follower of the way, the, the truth, whatever you want to say it. I, I don't fit into a certain denomination that because those those, um, well, those those there's extremes. There's there's all kinds of things for people to and and, and, and then about, again, you're right. And we're back to associations again. Yeah. Uh, you know, once you get get back <laughs> into. Right, right back to the association. Now, what is the thing that, that I, this is kind of the quality of this is hard to read? Yeah, but what's uh, that? The United States uppercase. You can tell, yeah, up the United States of America with the with the uppercase. Uh -huh. So there might I haven't read the comments, but um, I can guarantee you there's going to be something in there that's that's uh, been that that's uh, not correct or is. Um, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. Like I've been through all the guru stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been researching and studying the international law and all that stuff and the most important thing is chain of title you've got something called tangible property rights you have something called intangible property rights so if, if i'm holding this little tomato here that prematurely fell off the, the plant earlier mm. i bumped into it mm -hmm. um right now i've got the tangible it's in my hand so this is my tangible property right but if i drop it someone else picks it up I can't prove it's mine because I never I never uh, created a chain of title mm -hmm. I never um, if I have a private membership association with my my property in there we haven't even gotten into all that so that's that right. would be another time but right uh, right 
the intangible property rights is 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 your your right to something that's documented right right so the, the u.s claims all these things that the u.s company they claim all these things and um these are just examples of of the chain of title and i can uh i can get you links later on we can share with people that are asking or emailing you or whatever like yeah if they will accept a uh, chain of title and study the timeline mm. and also keep in mind that the company from 1789 is going to tell you anything that is um, advantageous to them. Mm. They Basically what they want you to do is they want you to fight within that company to fix it. They want you to think it's that, that your country is gone or it's been taken over and it was never a country when it was created. Mm. So from the get go it was not a country and that's just part of their campaign stuff. And people get stuck in this this loop. They never get out of it, ever, yeah, unless they find yeah. out about the law of nations and and how to build a nation, social compacts, how contracts work, how assemblies work, how committees work, and things like that. They won't they won't know what to look for, so they won't know what they don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this one was interesting here. This the just light you know licensing. Just thinking of. I mean, what kind of freedom do you have when you are forced into you're forced into an association which is a, is against your human rights, and then with that association, you are forced to have certain licenses in order to do certain things that and you didn't agree to any of it, but it's the thing that you you have found yourself in this situation, and so you. Uh, you know, you comply to the extent that you, uh, you know, you, that you want to function in in the world or in your uh, your little uh, sector. Um, right. So when you when you go to the DMV and you ask them for a license, you actually have you know how people uh, a lot of people are like um, they'll argue they have the right to travel, and they do, but they're going about it the wrong way. So when you go to them and you get the license. You're trading your uh, your intangible property rights um, for a benefit from mm. them, like a benefit to use the roads and things like that. But mm. they don't. Uh, I'm butchering it here. Let me see my notes real quick. Okay. So you have you have the intangible right to travel, mm. but they trick you into. Um, getting a license with them and transferring your intangible uh, property right it's something you can't see you know mm -hmm. we have we have rights you can't see you can't feel them you're right. they're just there and they hijack your your right and then they attach all these conditions and then they they get in between you and your uh, your point a and point b kind of mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. so they actually never give you any kind of consideration right so it's, it's not a valid contract right Okay, so I think we, you know, we're, we'll start transitioning now because we, because when we, because we're going, we're going to go over more stuff in the future. Because when I have you back, I want to get a little bit deeper into your personal journey and how you study this information. And you know, and I know that you, uh, you know, we'll talk about the uh, the nation that you're a part of because you're you're not. Uh, cause if, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'll, I, I won't even, <laughs> I'll let you explain all that. Cause that's like, you know, I, I cause I don't want, I'll say something wrong. You know, I'll say, <laughs> you know, the sovereign, cause I, I had made that mistake with the sovereign citizen Pete, but you're right. It's like that. I, you know, that's, it, it is obvious once you look at it, that's just a big, uh, uh, you know, that, that term, that term, you know, it's kind of like, well, it's, it's how we deal with, you know, I avoid all those disease concepts that don't have nothing to do with, you know, people are, you know, I hear that all the time where people are asking about specific diseases and I refuse to deal with that because I'm not yeah. that don't have nothing to do with, you know, that's not our association. If you want to deal with the medical association, then that those that terminology works with them. We don't we refuse that. See, and we're that's our power. See, we're refusing that in our association as opposed to them trying to impose something on us saying we're not allowed to use those words. It's not that we're not allowed. We don't want to use those words because they're debilitating and the concepts that come with them are debilitating. 
And so that's a decision that we make within our own association. And so uh, can I give a uh, give a I'm going to send you a, a link on Facebook. I, I want you to share this with the listeners because um, this this I don't want anyone to look at me for, you know, this information is not from me. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of it. I I didn't find it on my own. I'm I'm sharing it because it changed my life. By no means is this is this my information. <laughs> Um, this, you know what I mean? So I'm not selling anything. I just want to help people, um, become, become free. So, right. So and, I'll, uh, I'll send you a little thing. It's, um, it's called the, the T row show and the T row show is phenomenal and it's a podcast mm. and the, uh, the hosts on the T row show are very talented and you'll see when you listen to it I, i'm not giving this any justice when you mm. listen to that show and you follow through the podcasts it's it's so powerful it's uh it's it's great i listen to it every week they usually uh like clockwork they have one each week it's mm. about an hour hour and a half usually mm. sometimes shorter so and it's all in line with everything i talked about today um yeah so. Everything I talked about today pretty much came from the uh, the research and information from T Row and, and and things like that T Row show. Okay. So I'll put I just put it in there. Okay. Yeah, and I'm gonna put I'll put some of these links and some some information down. And some some folks are asking uh, asking who you are that, that you you can read read the <laughs> it says you know Michael Fatauer. Uh, so yeah, my Michael. Adam yeah, I'm. I'm a, I'm a mucosal diet practitioner, and uh, I'm a free spirit, and I'm an American national. I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I've I found ways to remove obstruction, legal obstruction, mm, mm. physical obstruction. Yeah, you know things that are blocking me from living to my fullest potential. That's what I'm about, and I'm I'm not about stepping on anyone on the way there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that that was the term. And so American national. That's. Mm -hmm. how you identify yourself and how you want to yep, be I, I belong within the original states of the union and i have a nationality i don't have a citizenship which is not a nationality mm, right because you yep. you claimed you you claimed your nationality yeah people people um might not know how powerful it is just to do a simple claim mm -hmm. like if my uh, if my dog ran away mm -hmm. and I never claimed the dog, which actually, honestly, right in front of you guys, I'll tell you, I, I haven't properly claimed my dog. I mm. haven't taken pictures or put tags on him and stuff like that. And he got out uh, a few months back and I was nervous because I knew I never claimed him. Mm. So if I put a, a, a public legal notice in uh, one of the, the newspapers, that works. I can have a description of the dog, mm -hmm. um, the address, whatever. And, and then... Once it's it's published or claimed and, and not rebutted, then it stands, mm -hmm. and then it's my dog. Yeah, yeah. So I would use that to establish chain of title to the tangible dog. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, and so that's some of some of what I want to get into. The next time we talk, we'll get a little deeper into some of these mechanics of because then the question is, so if people want to take the next step. If, if somebody was saying, OK, well, how do I liberate myself and remove these legal obstructions? What would you tell them? Where where should they start uh, in With terms the T -Row of the show and also because mm -hmm. um, the T Row show, they have links in there. Everything the T Row show talks about, they mm -hmm. have a link for everything. They mm -hmm. don't just talk. They, they, they have a link for everything. They back everything up. So right. you're you'll enjoy that. And. When you listen to the T-Row show, you'll find out about how to uh, declare uh, a resident or how to do a resident declaration. The, you'll, you'll learn the process of becoming an American national with the original states of the union. You'll learn the importance of chain of title. You know, if, uh, if you drop a receipt on accident and you try to return something, you instantly have chain of title issues and you're going to have issues returning a, a product at a store. So, yeah, yeah. So this is about... Like the mucosus diet healing system, that's about restoring your chain of title um, to your your physiology. Mm. You know, it's uh, it's about um, you have an obligation to your health, basically. So you have you have a right to um, 
to heal yourself and things like that. And, and did anybody stop any of you from finding the mucusless diet healing system? Mm-hmm. I mean, there might, there might be a lot of uh, strong suggestions that it's not, it's not going to work or whatever, but did you end up getting here? You know, you have, you have a right to this information. Right. All right. of this information discussed, <clears throat> you have a right, you have a right to it. Right. And that's, you know, and what I brought it, it brought up earlier, which is just really making me very, uh, very unsettled and, and angry, uh, is the, the forcing of kids to, because you can have whatever belief you have about the whole vaccination thing, which you, we practice the mucus diet healing system. We, sh- we don't even need to get into it. You know, all the details, people, you know, they're, way more educated in, in, on the details i don't even, i don't care about the details because i know i'm not into it and, and the people i'm associated with we're not into it uh and we believe people should have uh it was not even we believe human right human rights the international law believe you know people yeah. should have the liberty to do what they want with their bodies and the bodies of their children absolutely and so to have an an entity that is uh, an unauthorized entity force you and say we will remove your liberty if you do not do this if you do not pump your body full of poison I mean this is so this is worse so much worse than a lot of stuff because a lot of people complain about a lot of stuff. The outrage that there should be, I don't, I'm not even seeing the outrage. You know, there's been things that have happened, and I'm like, who cares? And, and on my Facebook, all day there will just be just this, you know, just stuff, uh, uh, people t- talking about stuff just all day. Where's the outrage for this? You know, th- this is... Well, the, the, the people actually have to learn how to be outraged first. <laughs> they well, have to identify yeah. and diagnose events and things around them. Right. You know, like uh, I used to eat meat with no problem. You know, I, I used to enjoy it and it, it felt natural or whatever. And then I learned that there was other ways of eating and other ways of healing the body. And it's as simple as it is, you know. Right. So yeah, this is the TRoshow.com. This is uh, these guys are professional. These are some of the the, the most honorable um, honorable people that are behind the uh, the T-Row Show and the information. Yeah, yeah. I just I just shared the link for that. If you're watching live in the live feed, I just put the link in, and then I'll put the link in the description once it's all all done. So let's uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, chat. And uh, we're gonna we'll kind of skim through because there's I know there's uh, there's a lot of things but we'll just see we'll catch some of the uh, some of the highlights. Yeah, I didn't I didn't look at them so that I didn't get distracted, but I definitely want to see them. Right. Let me bring up the right. Okay. All right. So we got it up here. We got Obacon chiming in right up the top. It says, What's up, uh, Obacon? Up and running, indeed. And uh, Obacon says he's got some good pictures of mucoid elimination. So that's <laughs> that's beautiful. You know, we're gonna we'll do do something with those. Uh, yeah, we'll have a contest at the celebration day. Where we'll have first, second, and third. <laughs> right. <laughs> then uh, see vibrational says, "Don't you hate it when someone with diabetes tells you how to eat and says ridiculous things like meat hasn't killed me, etc." I mean, anybody with anything, you know, you know, anybody when anybody says that, whether they have been uh, told they have something or not, you know, uh, diagnosed with something by the medical association members, <laughs> this association, I love that. Uh, but yeah, man, it's it, at at a certain point, you just uh, just just have pity, you know, and just and just just. It's just sad, you know, and just kind of because all you can do is be a living example, share the information and hope that they will, if not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe in 10 years. I mean, that's the attitude I have. There's people that I talked to about the diet 12 years ago that now after they've lived some life and they've gone through some illnesses and whatever they've gone through, now they're ready. Now they're ready to hear what I have to say and to take some of this information seriously. So it's definitely something where 
in my opinion, for me, I have an obligation to share, and I feel like those of us that practice a diet and are going down this path, uh, you know, there's a there's a there's an obligation to share to a certain extent. At at a certain point, uh, it's like giving back. It this this concept again with the with the United States a corporation. A lot of people have this idea that everybody should serve. Uh, in some capacity, there's some people that this idea everyone should serve at some length of time in the military, the corporate military, or everybody should do. Uh, uh, some people have this feeling within their religious association that you should serve a certain amount of time and tithe and uh, tell people, uh, ev- uh, evangelize, share uh, this information with, with other with that, you know, the belief system with other people. Um, so I feel that way about the mucus diet, that this is something that at, at a certain point, there's an obligation to at least help if, you know, get this information and get it out there. Charity Um, starts at home. So, um, I'm sure that once you knew it worked or worked for you and, uh, improved your life, then you were able to then help other people. Right. Right. Let's see. Uh. The, the NATAP says the saliva in the mouth really destroys a lot of the germs in the mouth. Uh, let's see. Dan says, if they can take your child, whose child is it? Not yours. If it were. I just said earlier that yeah, it's, uh, right. it's, it's property being traded on the stock stock exchange. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, through, that, through that birth certificate. Yeah. If it were, you would have full say over the child, which clearly is not the case. Uh, and you yourself are also not, quote, owned by yourself. You are part of the country of the legal nation of the country club, actually by your own consent. Let's see. Learn, uh, Rosanna says, learning German new medicine helps you realize that we are not benefiting our species by getting vaccinated I have a a friend with me that would like to um, just share just a quick little thing about how the uh, jails and prison systems work okay if if everyone's up for that yeah let's let's go for it hey how you doing everyone what's going on yeah yeah so uh, a lot of people do not understand how these jails and prisons work Uh, most of them are private you know privately owned they have stock mark uh stock shares and you know privately owners and uh you know the thing is when you get arrested when anybody gets arrested in uh, any of these u.s you know private company courts the what that happens is the cop is or the cops are usually the witness for the prosecutor hmm. in reality it's not a court whatsoever it's just a, a bank playing court so what happens is that the moment someone's arrested Um, before anything, the cops and the judges and the lawyers, they all sit down and they negotiate on what they're going to fine you on. So you're already going to have a fine way before, uh, you're found guilty of the fine. And they do that for a reason. The reason why they do that is because they hold people as a mortgage backed uh, security, meaning they're holding them for collateral for the fine that they'll find them guilty for later. Mm reason why they do that is because um, they take that fine and they it's an imaginary number and what they do is they place it in escrow once it's in escrow they can now you know um, loan nine tenths of it out to the biggest um, bidding investors on the stock market so what's going on is it's a misappropriation of funds that's being um, pulled through the the stock market and most of the time it's going into these judges retirement accounts 401ks and pensions so this is uh, how it essentially works um, the whole thing is a bank and so you have the prosecutor well the prosecutor is bidding the the court to accept the case right and it's all bond and the scriptures if you read on it says it takes um, an account of two to witness an account or two to witness an account right so there's the third there's the first person which is the principal and the two people witnessing it 
right? So the prosecutor is bidding the case on to the, the um, for the case to be sold onto the stock market, right? So his his signature would go on a bid bond, right? Mm. The judge, he is a broker. He's the one that uh, brokers the the account onto the stock market. So he's the banker playing judge, and his signature will go on the payment bond. And then you have a performance bond. You know, the contracts offer uh, offer acceptance performance consideration. There has to be a performance, right? And so the performance comes from your attorney or your lawyer. There has to be a performance on it. So in reality, it's your attorney or your lawyer that signs you up for jail time. People don't know that. And their signature would go on the performance bond. And that's what would sell the bonds uh, afloat onto the stock market. So everybody is being held as collateral for all these securities being invested on the stock market. And they can make a $300 um, fine turn into $500 million. So when it comes down to uh, you having a case against you with these people, and uh, they either... Um, find you guilty and make $500,000, I'm sorry, $500 million in the course of 20 years, or they dismiss the case and they have to pay out of the, uh, for the, the case out of their own pocket, meaning the prosecutor pays for it. It's actually a known expression when people go into court and they look at the prosecutor and they say, I hope you brought your checkbook with you today because they're letting them know right, that they're right. paying for the case. Right, right. Because uh, they, they, they've gone in and invested on the stock market those those uh people are investors and uh you know they're going to want their money and those investors they're probably a little more dangerous than those people in the de facto courts and a lot of people don't understand how this stuff works but it doesn't matter what the judges say it doesn't matter what the sheriff says it doesn't matter what any of those people say what really matters is what the underwriters say because it's the underwriters for the insurance companies that writes all this um underwriting insurance policies under everything on the U.S. side. Mm. So if, uh, you know, a claim goes through and the underwriters reverse something, that's what they do. And the, it, it's a fact that, you know, the judges and the sheriffs and all that, they don't get on the bad side of the underwriters. They, they know what that means for them. And so when you're understanding how this, uh, you know, this system works, you understand that it's all private company which a private company cannot be a public government because it has to do with profits and gain rather than justice, equality, and tranquility. So you got a lot of people that are you know, being railroaded and trafficked into a private company that they're not even a part of, and uh, then they're you know, incarcerated, which is considered torture. It's called pain compliance. So all these people have a right to uh, you know, claim uh, uh, file charges uh, as torture or, or pain compliance against these people and uh, criminal international trespasses and all. They just have to know how, what they're doing and they have to make the right claim. They have to do a resident declaration. They have to um, publish their entity as doing business as within the states of the union. They have to sign a bilateral social compact agreement. If they don't sign one, well, they have no standing. They have no rights. There has to be an obligation for you to have a right. For an example, right, uh, you have to feed yourself or you're going to starve and die. You know, the obligation is feeding yourself. So you have the right to hunt, you have the right to grow food, you have the right to barter or trade or buy food. That's a right because you have the obligation to feed yourself. Without any obligations, you have no rights. So when it comes to a social compact, you have to create the obligation. And you have to create it bilateral, which means two people come together and they both agree they both have uh, freedom of speech. They both agree bilaterally that they won't violate each other's freedom of speech. And that's an agreement, right? Right, right. There's signature parties to it, so that's uh, that they cannot come back later and, and say, well, I didn't sign that. I'm not a party to that. Well, there's Cause your ba signature. Because basically, in summary, we're, we're talking about illegitimate entities, entities that masquerade as governments that by way of the noble myth of their power, uh, they are we, we are turning control over to them. Well, we do so when uh, we remain silent, allow them classify us as their um, as their members. Yeah, we see, have to correct the record. 
and when you do claims and publications, you're correcting the record and changing that. Someone mm -hmm. could say, Professor Spira, um, uh, let me see here, um, you're funny, you're tall, and you're stupid. And you could say, uh, I'm not funny and tall, you know, and just like completely let the, the term stupid stick to you mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it's just you got you got to rebut things. Or, right, right, right. Uh, just associate yourself with it. You don't want to be anywhere near the, the liability or, or things that are illegal and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Could you go back on the uh, images? I want to close with one of these these images. It was the one that was um, it had a red bar across it, like a highlight. Okay, all right. Cause yeah, we do we, we do <clears throat> we do need to wrap up because I know we we've been because I know how the these these kind these conversations once you get the going. <laughs> Then you then it's then it's going, but it's you know then you, it can start losing people, you know, and such. Yeah. Tr well, always try to come back to the like simplicity, it. and yeah. and and things that you know people can really grab, like oh yeah, I've had that experience, or yeah, I have that in my pocket, you know. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. So okay, for the simplicity of all this stuff, once you have a little bit of education under your belt, it's as simple as making a claim. Mm. Well, yeah, because this is what's happening in these in these private courts, and this Keep is going. why this is why you have to correct the record, right? What's going on is that they bring you in. the The prosecutor is the trustee, right? And they placed you in the position as trustor, right? And the trustee manages the account, manages the case, right? Which is why he's the bidder, right there. And the trustor gifts. He's there to gift somebody. Because when you look at international law, confiscation is illegal as hell, right? What? Seizure is illegal as hell. They're not allowed to do it. So what it becomes, right, is it becomes these sheriff's offices and these police departments are a military occupancy violating the laws of armed conflict by attacking civilians, most of the time separating families, and done so on behalf of a foreign power, which is the the Pope. It's a foreign monarch. Mm. And the very definition, that's treason. It's treason. There's no denying of it. The evidence is all there, and they're all involved. If they know it or not, they're committing treason. So it, there has to be something that cleans this up because uh, it's going to get pretty ugly if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Because everyone that goes in there, they don't know that they're, they're there to give the Pope. And so when you go into these courts, you have to correct the record. See, now they have you as trustor, and you're supposed to be trustee of the person. So you would go in there and say, the trustee for the person is here, and the beneficiaries have already been named. Which we can, yeah. I, yeah, and, the, I and this is stuff that, that we got, because yeah. there's a lot of terminology, and you, the average person listening, actually, I know uh, they don't know none of this. Yeah, yeah. A lot of this, so yeah, we got to come back to it, you know, because that's a whole, that's a whole, just talking about trustees and trusteeship, that's an episode, you know, that's yep. just, you know, so. In, so. in closing, this, this is an image of an American national that got dragged into um, or forced into association or they tried to force him into association into those courts. Mm. And right there it says non-citizen, non-resident alien to the U.S. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. And is this someone that you know or, or that you just knew of? You just studied in, this, this in, case. Uh, I'm in social compact with them. I don't know uh -huh. them personally. I know oh, okay. that they are an American national. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So basically the because this this person did things the right way. Yep. <laughs> so when they were brought up on whatever the I don't know what the charge is here, what the the circumstance under which he found himself in an illegitimate court, but they threw it out, it looks like here. Yep. If you if you're then that that goes back to the, the betting the betting process if 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 they can't establish that you're one of theirs, then their laws don't apply. And so that's what happened here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know this was a lot for everybody, and, and I didn't learn this stuff overnight. And I'm still learning, you know. Like, you can hear Adam um, speaking, like, at a different level than, than I understand what he's saying, but mm -hmm. I don't speak the same way. And But he, he really understands this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is is getting into like we saying the the see people because we'll throw that uh, that 
that concept out there of, you know, where people will say like, okay, well, we are an occupied people or we are enslaved or we are whatever. And that type of tagline tends to be thrown around. Uh, but the details the, the as you say the chain of title the these uh, the the concepts of associations and the entities and the corporation all these things uh to start to unwind it to actually see what that means to be uh to, to be occupied to not be at liberty to, to what does that actually mean to into uh, you know to start to unravel some of this stuff uh is is i mean at least that's my goal you know to right and, and then also this information if if people out there want to create a mucusless diet um, society or private membership with land and and uh, like a little township or, or whatever mm -hmm. those things can be done and right. the uh, if it's put into place the right way you won't have any issues you can grow whatever you want build things without um building permits, all that stuff, because you have to separate yourself. So that's, I just wanted to, you know, mention that because yeah. that's where we could go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It'd be nice to walk outside and just wave to your neighbor knowing that he's not firing up the grill in a few minutes. With right. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, whatever, all the, all the other things that we're looking for could be there. Right. And uh, so let's do a couple more comments here. Uh, you know, Dan, Dan left a lot of comments. He's uh he had, said a couple interesting things he said well this was back when we were first talking about the sovereign citizen he said well sovereign citizen is anyone who still appears as a citizen but wants or claims to be sovereign if you want out and have nothing to do with it all anymore one really should get rid of everything passport everything with your name on it yeah but then uh, if, if you get rid of everything you, you're stateless and you're even worse off mm -hmm. um, if you're identified if someone, if, if you're going as a U.S. citizen, you, 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 as bad as it could be, they would still like protect you sometimes if you're in another country and you're stuck and all that stuff. Um, but sovereign citizen is not a term you, you want to affiliate yourself with or the term sovereign because it's, they, they campaign against that stuff. Right. So the information I've shared with you is, is at the depths, you know, it's, it's at the, the ocean floor, it's calm, it's, it's, it's never changing, it's unwavering. Mm. And then all the other terms like sovereign citizen and, and a lot of the stuff the company's pumping out is just constantly changing and always moving around. It's not anchored in any yeah, truth. Yeah, because it it's, no it's, it, 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 it attracts the extremist. You know, that's, I'm going to do a whole episode on just extremism yeah. because, you know, we deal with a lot of folks that are, you know, especially – especially folks that have done the extreme things and th that they thought was associated with what we do and it's not. And then they come back and see that we're actually right down the middle that we we're not, we don't, we're not promoting and preaching things that are extreme. Uh, and you know, and th so that's, that, that's a thing that these, those terms, they get, uh, hooked in by the, the extremists, the ones that, you know, right. that say, you know, if you get pulled over by the cops, you know, don't, you know, you know, there's all the like, just put your thing down <laughs> a hand and you, put you your can, left foot out, yeah. you know, well, they say <laughs> like, you know, just have a couple inches and, and read, you know, you can read from a script and, you know, uh, are you, you know, it's like, and now it's good to know some of that. I'm not saying, you know, yeah, it's good to yeah. know, you know, am I being detained and, you know, am I free to go? Yes. Like, I'm not saying don't study that, but um, there's videos of some of these folks. And I, and I, and after you say that, I, they distinctively use that term as they're exposing these people. They use that terminology. You know, another sovereign citizen uh, gets their, you know, their car bashed in by the cops and, and, and brought out because they basically, they were just being just, just idiots. You know, they just, they yeah, were they're thinking, being belligerent. yeah, yeah. It was like, it wasn't even didn't even need to go down like that yeah uh, so so dan mentioned uh if you want out and you have nothing to do with it all anymore one really should get rid of everything passport everything with your name on it and uh if, if you do that you're going to be stateless you have to have somewhere to go before you're leaving there and, and i think what what he is trying to accomplish with there is not to associate with them so that those laws don't affect him right but if he's not in another sovereign body politic or bilateral social compact 
or in uh, a national uh, government with one of the states of the, the Union, the original states of the Union, or if he's not a part of the original states of the Union, um, whether it whether he's read it or not right now, um, the T. Rowe Show will get people up to speed. But um, you need to have somewhere to go. You, you need uh, a body or people that are that are going to protect you and, and also hold you accountable so that you don't harm them. So. Yeah, yeah. Cause see, um, you know, Cause, I'm, cause we I'm, have passports. We have yeah, passports. Yeah. We have drivers, uh, international driver's license. We have all those things. Uh, but see, when he says removing your name, what you got to do is you got to re, you got to reestablish and republish and reclaim what that name means and and how it's being used. Because mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I, um, in the introduction, it says Michael Adam Fathour PMA. PMA. Yeah. I do every. I do all my legal business. I do it through a private membership association. Right. And I, I deal with my members only. It creates its own uh, its own jurisdiction within the private membership. And as long as I don't harm anybody, nothing nefarious is going on. I can do whatever I want, and so can the member. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. So I, that that was what I wanted to yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hush up. I'm sorry. But uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got fat vegan. Oh, one said, yes, brother, AMA created and own the concept of diseases, but they don't know the cause to none of them. So they can keep them. Well, they don't want to know the cause. I mean, and, and if they do, they definitely <laughs> they they uh, it's not in their business interest as a corporation that makes money. Uh, it's not in their interest to have those, you know, cheap cures, you know, expensive treatments. Yeah. Uh, but not not things that people can be taught how to do and, and heal a lot of things. That's not that's not in their interest at all. Uh, let's see. Fat Vegan says headed toward the mucusless practice uh, in my profession and business with the iridology. So I love all of the info uh, on law and claiming my natural rights. Yes. And that's a whole other discussion that you'll learn about on the T. Rowe show is about natural law. Mm. Uh, and mm. what it is, mm. I, I won't. I won't touch on it now. But yeah. but uh, they're onto something there, and and it and it there's something there for them to learn about natural law, and it'll mm. blow their mind. It's real simple. You mm-hmm. just have to, you know, listen to the podcast on natural law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, yeah. So I mean, we got into some stuff today. <laughs> we got got into it, and I. You know, I encourage folks to to go back over this one and check this one out again and and research the terminology. You know, it's like because every time you hear if you hear a word because I do it all the time and it's a reflex for me. Uh, if I hear a word, even a word that I might have looked up before. But if I there's a word that I'm not like if I can't just say a, a succinct definition of it immediately, I look it up and I might look up the same word. 10 15 20 times and read it and meditate on the definition so a word like trustee boom i'm gonna look that up what's the etymology of it what's the definition what's different definitions of it what's older definitions newer definitions study the word study the word you don't have to study my interpretation of the word or another professor's interpretation of the word you study the word and come up with your own interpretation of the word now we're talking about some real education that you do that you can do for yourself. That's the work. But that's the work a lot of people don't want to do. They want it tied up in a bow and, and say, okay, here's what you need to know. Like, no, study this stuff. All these, we have all these words that we uh, study the word and then look at the way the word is being used in practice. How is it understood within the context of a culture that the, there's different definitions a, a cultural definition is going to be different from a legal definition It's going to be different from a scientific definition It's going to be different from a social scientific definition and so i'm an advocate of words and studying words and for me that's how i learn you know when people want to try to give me credit for different things and it's, it's i'm just someone that just tries to study and understand different things and especially words because whether you're in the sciences the social sciences law uh whatever you're in get the i would say the fact because the foundation of all this even these things that we're talking about human rights uh uh what are these contracts 
the foundation of all this is words. And so why not under if we're going to begin to understand these things in a holistic manner, then we got to start understanding the words, the words that make up these larger concepts that the word that makes. Uh, so why some of these ancient texts have the word as being the thing that created life. You know, the word, the words, getting into the words, the definitions. So that's 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 my thing for this, you know, to put that out there. There's a lot of people that are not going to understand a lot, a lot of different things. I'm learning myself. But the but the way that we can begin to learn on our own uh, and get some command over this kind of information is to really get into the words, you know. And the same goes with mucus's diet and naturopathy. That's why with the you know, the e-course you know, I spend a lot of time with vocabulary. You know, Eric doesn't really do that in the original mucus's diet. That's something I've tried to bring to the table because I think it's important to isolate the words and analyze them and meditate on them and study and understand them. So that's uh, that's that, that's my that's my yeah, I agree. <laughs> it was the words in the the law of nations from 1758 that sparked the the Revolutionary, the Revolutionary War. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's very, very, very powerful. You know, word, word, words, you know, etymology. That's why I, you know, I tell you, you get into etymology. Uh, uh, you know, just a lot can be understood by getting into the original meaning of words and 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 looking at how those meanings have been changed uh, over the uh, over the years. So, with that said, I want to thank Michael. Adam Fathauer, PMA, uh, for his uh, 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 just his time, man, and, and you know, bearing with us with you know, these technical issues and computers and uh, the stuff that we went through to make sure that we got this program to happen. Um, and you know, I know it was this was going to be a longer podcast, but everything that's in here is important. I mean, this is because because we don't just talk about revolution. And we don't just march and we don't just put our hand in the air. We want to understand the DNA of liberation and the steps to take to be able to create what we want to create. And so it starts with this, you know, it don't start with having a gun in, in your, you know, all these people that want to have their stockpile of weapons. It don't start with that. Yeah, those are the ones that want it quick. No transition, no study. No transition, no study, and those are the ones that you know that, that uh, they're going to get themselves killed or someone else killed. This ain't about that. This is about, like you said, the d- doing things in such a way where it's permanent change. And if you do it the right way, and you're not rushing, you're not saying, okay, tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm saving up my money and we're gonna we're gonna get some land and we're gonna create a you know like no. No, this is about really, really understanding this stuff and being able to create something for yourself and for uh, uh, and for others who want to associate with you and who you want to associate with. So, yeah, so I think you you got any last words for the uh, for the brothers and sisters out there? Um, well, I, I want to thank everybody for listening. And when we got cut off yesterday, a few people were asking what happened, and it it, it made it made me feel good, um, you know, not to my, not to the head or, or whatever, no ego kind of thing, but just like I'm in the right spot. Um, mm-hmm. I'm participating in things that I'm adding something to, and I appreciate. Um, I just appreciate being a part of it. I appreciate being on the show, and uh, when I mentioned the the pickles. I have an alternative to the pickles. Mm. I just uh, fill a jar up with lemon juice mm-hmm. and I put cucumbers and spices and onions and stuff in there. And mm. that's my non vinegar pickle. <laughs> so okay. I figured yeah, out how yeah, to get yeah. around that. Okay. <laughs> if I really wanted it. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's all I have. All right. I'll close with pickles after all this internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man. Well, I, I definitely really, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, this is, you know, we just taking things we didn't even get to talk about. You know, the Eric Day celebration. You're gonna be doing oh, some wow. food demonstrations, 
and uh and we'll talk more about that you know yeah you're gonna do some food demonstrations and preparing the food for the event yeah if, if anybody wants to wants to come out i'll be there yeah I'll, I'll, be, I'll be participating and helping with um preparing food if you guys want to help prepare food or, yeah. or hang out or talk or, or whatever you know come on out come, yeah yeah come yeah. see everybody else and and plug in as they like to say professor spear likes to say plug in right right i'm actually uh I'm actually like being over strict right now, but safely <laughs> over strict so that I, I, you know, almost like I'm not fasting for 40 days, uh, but I'm doing whatever I can to make sure I don't show up with as much physiology, uh, mm. physical baggage, you know, so yeah, I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, and, and we but, do that kind of stuff a lot where these kind of events will inspire us to either, you know, fast or to just be just kick up our game eat a little cleaner be a little more mucus free you know do a couple little extra (laughs) enemas whatever it is for each person um you know so that's one reason that we put these things together too is because it it we we do try to rise to the occasion uh and so that's that's an important aspect of the breathe a little air yeah yeah (laughs) breathe a little air yeah 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 you know get (laughs) down tonight and uh (laughs) So, uh, so, all right. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and, uh, and please, you know, share the video and share the stuff on the website, you know, all those kinds of things just, uh, help us get this information out there. So I'm Professor Spira and this has been the Mucus Free Life podcast and until next time, peace, love, and breath.